Welcome to the Outback. We're going to be building a fire today. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to survive in the wilderness. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to acquire a house. And a house will give you shelter from rain, elements, wind, other things like that. It's a really important step to just being out in the wilderness and surviving as a human. So what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm going to show you the way that I start a fire so I get some small wood in there to get it started. And then I just reach up on my mantelpiece. Everyone kind of has a different way. And I grab a lighter. Um, I then use this lighter to light this piece of wood. You hold it vertically. That way the fire, the heat can go up. Might take a while. This is a big one to catch. But once it, once it catches, I'm just going just gonna to kind of hold it here. Try not to burn my fingers, but really just... Make sure I get this stick on fire real nice. Um, pretty standard survival technique, to be honest. It's what a lot of people do. And then I'm just going to try and look in here for somewhere to stuff this that I think will uh, do the most damage. Uh, and it looks like right here is pretty good. Sometimes you got to get in there and like move things. Um, and since I flipped the rotation of this stick, I'm just going to I'm just going to light the bottom side, too. That way it can kind of, the flame, flames kind of only go upward. So you can't really have a, expect a flame to go down. So I'm just, I'm just re, relighting that here. This is just a, this is just a standard lighter, standard issue lighter here. Nothing too crazy. Okay. So that's, that's basically pretty good. Uh, and then you just wait. All right. Um. How's everyone doing today? Is everyone behaving? Is everyone being good? Nah, doesn't sound like people are behaving. Flames only of birds like stung. Glad to not see a TV atop the fireplace. Yeah, fuck TVs. Um, I'm glad this is what I tune into. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Nice as sk a, a skilloscope hack in here. Yeah, so the. The oscilloscope uh, in question today is going to be a lovely. Hmm, I'm trying to see if I have any. Ooh, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Today, we're going to be looking at a. One of these. One of these bad boys. Bought it in high school. It's a piece of shit. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if maybe it can be less of a piece of shit by writing better software than, uh, than they have on it. How does that sound? Maybe, maybe we can make it a lot better than what it is because software is holding it back. Uh-huh. <sighs> All right. So, we're kind of just waiting for this fire to go. Probably should start bellowsing it pretty soon here, just to make sure we get it going nice. Pretty standard thing. Once again, if you're out in the wild, pick up a pair of bellows. And just get in there. You don't want to use your mouth. You'll get winded and blue-heading and stuff. So just try and find a good spot. You're really going for the sound. You can kind of hear when you're bellowsing the right spot. It's not really a visual thing. Like, I can kind of aim, and I'm, I'm putting this on a, on a stand. I'm resting this on the fireplace so that I know that I'm getting a consistent good spot here. Oh, and that's a really good sound. So I know it's, I know it's going really well. Now, unfortunately, this is just a little bit of bark. So this will catch on fire fast, but this won't really get my fire going. This is looking pretty good. I just am really looking to make those initial embers, make a good little uh, fire setup here. All right, I'm going to see if I can do it down here. It might be risky. I might blow out the flame. Nope, we should be fine. We'll give it a little bit more gusto. Unfortunately, my bellows has a leak, so I need to get a new bellows that works better. But now I definitely have the, the wood on fire. But I put the fire out. But it will come back. The fire will come back, I swear. 
Sometimes you got to just scare the fire. And sometimes you don't get the fire back. Sometimes you just look like an idiot. But it's smoking a lot. If I if I just move that stick closer, maybe I I don't know. Maybe maybe I screwed it up. We're good up here though. We might just add some more logs, call it a day. Memory leak. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good looking fire. Alright, let's go let's go find some wood on it. Today we're going to be using some oak. Oak leaves are really good coal. Big fan of oak. Fantastic way of uh, running a fire. So we're going to put this right on top. Try not to disturb it too much. Just want to make sure there's good airflow in there and then we'll really get ripping on it. We're going to get that log up and running real good. A little shift. A little bit of a shift. Sometimes that throws you off. It's pretty standard. You can see the angle that I'm taking here with the bellows is just to get the perfect location for the fire. That's pretty good. Now we're just going to lay this one across the top and a little bit vertically if we can. And it's not going to go there, so it's going to go here instead. All right, there we, there we go. There we go. All right. Oh, that sound is so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a good looking fire. Okay. <laughs> uh, it'll need a it'll need a little bit more work. We'll keep our eye on it for a, for a second, and then we'll go over to the scope. Oh, is everyone behaving today? <laughs> you have a fresh air intake? No, I don't. No, unfortunately. That's a gorgeous fire, right? It's not even going yet. Wait until there's coals. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the life, chat. I'm very glad that I bought a cord of wood. That was, uh, that was worth it. Oh, yeah. I take pride in my fires. There's a little bit of work that goes into a good fire. Is your flu open or closed? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if my carbon monoxide detector goes off. That'll let us know if it's open or closed. <laughs> we getting rusty in here? We having a sleepover. Oh, definitely a sleepover. Hey, Converter, how, how are you doing? Oh, that fire's looking good. You can see it wrapping around in the back. That's how you know it's going to be a real good fire. Now, I will need to turn these logs pretty soon. Notifications are loud? That's because the microphone's far away. Uh, yep. Um... Just finished the printer hacking videos and really enjoyed them. I'm glad. The printer hacking series was super fun. Hmm. Thought I'd throw a sub your way. Aw, oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh. Oh, that's a good looking fire. Not very warm yet. All right, chat. So, today, what is on the menu? Shit. I only planned this far. Um, so, yeah, Chad, I hope you have good ideas. Because I, 
ideas are not easy, you know? You come to streams for fun ideas. Oh, it needs a little work. Oh, it's looking good. All right. Oh, yeah. That's what I like to see. Did I miss the Freedom Phone stream? No, we just got scammed. Roasted marshmallows are always an option. Came to stream for ideas, got fire. I like how you actually have bellows. Bellows are critical to a fire. Bellows are by far, by far the most important part to any fire. I'm pretty sure if I was out in the wild, I would try and build bellows before starting a fire. <laughs> they just make it so much easier to run a good fire. Like, I... I started this off of like one stick. It's just one stick. I started one small stick on fire and threw it in there and I got this. And the reason I got this is because of the bellows. This would not have started without bellows. It just, it just wouldn't have happened. And I'm really trying to get some early coals going. So I'm trying to burn it a little bit hot. We're grooming. We're grooming the fire such that we got some good coals, which will make it easier to manage the fire later. These are fire tricks with Gamozo. Welcome to welcome to fire making with Gamozo, out here in the wild. All right, we're gonna try and get the fire going a little bit on this side too. You don't want to you don't want a lopsided fire. Fire is all the matter of surface area. It's a game entirely of surface area. So you want to find that good surface area, get some good airflow, and you, you'll have a good fire before you know it. Let's see if I can get the front of this fire started. Looks like we can. That's looking good. That's what I like to see. This is a good spot. Wanted to see the Freedom Phone get wrecked? Yeah. I know. We all do. That's looking pretty good. I don't think it's caught yet, though. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the life chat. Um, what have I missed? What do I need to catch up on? That's enough exercise for one month. <gasps> This is a live chat? Oh. Are these the bots that I paid for? These are just the bots. Ah, uh, beep boop, beep, beep boop, beep, beep boop, beep boop. All right. Um, so, I think this fire is actually going. I think I can break those into coals now. All right. So, what we're going to do today is look at the data output that we can get from this oscilloscope. We'll probably write some software, maybe. Uh, maybe do some hardware. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Coming to OffensiveCon? No. 
No, I, I didn't plan that far out. My passport just expired, so I'm renewing that right now anyways. Beep boop. Beep boop. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll get to the British accent once I get up. Let's see. Doop. Doop. Yep, there we go. At least passport services in the U.S. are back to normal. Yeah. Ooh, little shiftage. Little shiftage. Not bad. I think it's time to break these into coals. All right. Let's see what we can do here. We got a couple pieces there. This one should break. Yeah, it does. All right. Now, now that that's flipped, it's going to take a second to get that going again, but it will be for the better in the long term. So we get those coals right there in a nice little pile. Get these over here. All right. Now we just have to get that going. Can't be shit. All right. Only took three weeks. Wow, that's that's really impressive, to be honest. That looks okay. Let's get another log. Perfect. I think this should now be a pretty self-managing fire. All right, chat. Let's let's get up. Let's get up here, chat. Turn down your mic. Okay. Yeah, it's a good looking fire. That's good looking fire. Okay, so what we need to do. Um Okay, do, 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 do. What have I missed, chat? Oh, come on, fire. Come on, fire. Do your thing. That honestly looks pretty good on this camera, doesn't it? That's really not bad. Damn. I'm impressed. It's actually pitch black in here. The camera's like turned up quite a bit for brightness. Ooh, ooh, little pop. What a what a good what a good little fire. Just a nice slow comfortable burn. Okay. Got to put the chain across? Nah, I just leave it open. It looks better that way. It's all about the experience. <laughs> Quality pyromaniac stream. I don't know. I think I think just building a nice fire is just really soothing. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we have to, hmm. Um, hmm. I guess that was, that's what happens when you get a camera with extremely good low light performance. Yeah, this is honestly pretty wild. It is a really good camera. I did optimize it for low light. <laughs> oh, that's a good fire. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of management on the other desk quick. Um, because I don't have my electronics lab set up. So, uh, yep, we're just going to do that real quick. How does that sound, chat? Does that sound exhilarating to clean up a desk? Hmm. 
Mmm, that sounds so fun! Yay! Gamozo content! Ah! Ah! It's so bright! Now we're gonna go over there, and we're just gonna we're just gonna clean up the lab a bit. Can definitely tell a chick decorated your place. Damn! Thanks for the compliment. Uh, we'll just set this down here, and then the rest of the shit I'm just gonna stuff in drawers until it goes away. How does that sound? Just stuff shit in drawers until there's no longer shit out on the desk, okay? That's what we're gonna do. This is pretty classic cable management here. This is, I think, what most people do. I'm gonna turn up my gain a bit. What's crazy is I should be able to turn up the gain pretty loud and just let the compressor handle it. So when I'm talking away, is that is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that is a good little, little unit right there. Okay. Oh, these things, I forgot about these. Those are pretty good. I haven't done electronics in a while, if you can't tell. We'll move this. Ah. Ooh, what's this? A hundred gigabit ethernet, Nick. Probably should put that in a better spot. Hmm, yikes. Okay, more parts of my camera stand. Uh, oh, we have an oscilloscope probe already out and probing something. That's really good. Nice to see that. <sighs> Too bad we're focused on your mic. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the scene. There's the probe drawer. Okay. Next. Ooh. We should program this sometime. That would be fun. Maybe. Um. All right. Ooh, a surface book. Not a, not a bad find. Not a bad find. You would never imagine that's in there, would you? Good little surface book. Good little surprise. What else do we got? Ooh, some solder. We'll put that in there. Some wires. Somewhere I have a wire drawer where I keep wires. There it is. They go right in the wire drawer. Screwdriver. Probably use that. Hmm, some, uh, some probes. Nice. Good probes. <laughs> what are those shorts? They're really comfy. They're Lululemons. Yeah, damn right. But they do look comfy. Um, what else do we got? Ooh, here is, it's taken apart, obviously, because anything on this desk would be taken apart. Um, but this is, does anyone recognize this? Anyone recognize this? More specifically, this. God damn it. I like spaces. It's a very specific device. This, this will tell you what it is. Only this is really going to be noticeable. See if I can flip this open without it falling apart. It might fall apart. Look at that. Look at that. A five row keyboard. Is that not the most beautiful thing ever? Oh, what a piece of art. All right. Now we'll stuff that in the drawer. Mm, that's a good looking drawer for it. There we go. Okay. Put this in the drawer. That's part of it. 
I think I have some screws that are part of it too. Yeah, I got a bunch of screws that are part of it. I'll just dump those in that drawer too. Uh, there we go, just dumped in there. That's good. Okay. Mm. Ooh. I don't remember programming this, but some dev board that I must have programmed at some point. Probably wrote Rust for it. Pretty classic. All right, what are these? Ooh, two different ones. Okay. So, let's see what drawer has these in it. Looks like this one. Um, we'll put that out back. And we can put this in the front. There we go. Always put your stuff back where it belongs, everyone. That's something pretty important that a lot of people don't understand. You gotta put your shit back where it belongs. And where it belongs is where you think you'll look for it next. Uh, what are these? Looks like the right spot. Ooh, a dev board. Somewhere I have a dev board drawer. Yeah, there we go. Yes, I do. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, got another thing. Oh, that's fun. Must have been doing something with that. I'll well, put that away. Uh, hmm, we can put that in dev boards. Let's just open this up quick. How's this open? Oh, that's annoying. What an annoying design. Stupid. Well, we'll just throw this uh, on the floor for now. Um, then we got the, uh, ooh, that's a fun one. Mm, put that away. Where do I want to put this? Honestly, I think it deserves its own drawer. That's a good little piece of kit. Ooh, we got a battery. That's a good find. All right, battery. Mm, miscellaneous box of stuff that I've had for 20 years. And it's miscellaneous box of stuff. So that's fun. Uh, looks like some ancient heat shrink tubing all over the place. Must have been heat shrink tubing something at some point. So that's, that's nice. Um... I guess we'll make a drawer for that one too. We'll do, this will be my, uh, that'll be my drawer for heat shrink tubing. And that's part of the phone. I guess a lot of the phone is out on the table. Now we have some bananas, some nanners, and some dead boards. Ooh, we need USB-C cable. A long, long USB-C cable. That's a, that's a good find. Throw that there. Um, uh, what else? What else? Now we can disassemble the stack of banana cables. Looks like these are all male. So these go in the specific drawer where I keep those. Oh, it looks like we have another one. Oh, we have another one. Oh, we have an, uh, are these all male? Yes. And we have one. Oh, another one. Holy shit. I must have been going ham. And another one. Huh. Well, look at that. Guess I got a lot of bananas. Okay. That's good. Put that away. I'll put this one away. Um. That's pretty good. Got some breadboards, which I don't think we'll need today. I don't think we'll be doing any bread, so we'll put these away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I've got my, uh, oh, probably should change that number to something random. Um, got my resistance box. This is the coolest thing in the world. Little resistance box. Big fan of that. Good, good tool to have. Some people probably can imagine why that's valuable to have. Um, okay. Then, that looks pretty good. Okay. So I'll put this in the... I like to connect these bananas back to back into a loop so that they don't snag as much. When you're trying to find the right one. All right. 
Okay. What else do we have? Uh, a couple of these wires. We'll just uh, put those in the box of miscellaneous things. Same with this random resistor and this random piece of wire, which is actually part of the phone, as well as the screw. So I'll actually put these in the phone, the phone bin. Okay, uh, put there. Some SD cards, some old, some old Ziploc bags. That's pretty good. Nice. All right, throw those on the ground. Ah, uh, whoo! What is this? Looks like we have a 10 gigabit Intel network card. Yes, we do. X540, not a bad one. Honestly, one of the nicest network cards to write drivers for. So, if anyone wants to write drivers for a network card and do 10 gigabit stuff, that's a good one. Okay, uh, I have no idea where I keep these. In fact, I don't even know if this is supposed to be like old stuff. Oh, there we go. I do have a drawer for it. Nice. Perfect. Ah, uh, that nick will just put on the fireplace mantle. Ooh, what's this? Ah, oh, serial port to header. That's a good one. Put that in a box of everything. And then we have a random piece of wire that we'll throw in the box. And I think we did it. Okay. All right. What network card? X540. Intel. All right, so now we'll just do a little bit of, little bit of dusting, a little bit of cleaning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, clean them, clean it right up. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good looking device. That's what I like to see. All right. Oh yeah. All right. I get everything. That is pretty good. We'll even clean under these today. All right. That looks good. That looks real good. Okay. All right. So now we've cleaned. Here we go. See, it was not that hard, chat. There's no reason to throw such a fit. The popping of the fire in the background. Yeah, you like that? Okay, so now what do we want to do? Um, I need to set up some networking. I need to run a network cable from there to there. And... I don't want to do that. I guess I'm going to just need a long networking cable. Hmm. What do I even have for that? Hmm. What's funny is I have a lot of fiber for that length, but I don't have any good short cables for that length.
let's hope that this uh, will make a big deal. I think this is longish. This is probably like 10 feet. This isn't great, but whatever. It's probably good enough. I probably should run a switch on this desk. Just custom make a cable. But I really don't want to make a cable right now. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Huh? Huh? God, that is a nice cable. You ever have like a just nice, a physically nice Ethernet cable that's tangling in your hands? There we go. There we go. And we'll just plug this in there. Then we'll plug this in here. And then we'll take this and just throw it on the floor. Okay, that looks good. Now we want to plug in everything else. Uh huh. Ah? 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 Oh, art. Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, that. And then, uh, hmm. Got one of these. There we go. That looks pretty good. Nice. Good networking. And that goes into here. Okay. Those are both good. Can't wait to try and find those on my network. That will be fun. Uh, switch. Plug it in. Mm -hmm. Plug this in. Plug this in. Plug this in. Then plug this in. Uh-huh. Turn that on. Yeah. There you go. That's how you build an electronics lab. That's just, that's it. That's all you gotta do. All right. So now we have a good electronics lab up and running. Um, sweet. So now I gotta go find those on my network. And once I find them, I'll give them a static IP. Once they have a static, once they have a static IP, then we'll be able to do some stuff. All right. Ah, uh, hope everyone's behaving today. So, ooh, nice. It shows up as a DMM. Nice. Okay. So we'll say add static mapping. Got to figure out what the next IP is in my static table. Uh, looks like a dot that. Okay, nice, not bad. All right, and we'll just say this is uh, I don't know DMM. That's a good one. All right, save. Okay, that's great. Now the next thing that I should be able to do is find the other one. Ooh, I don't know what the other one is. Hmm. That's unfortunate. So we'll get that a new IP, and then the other one, I don't know what its MAC address is. I can look it up on this computer. All right. Uh, looks like it is that. Okay. Oh, there it is. All right. Make another mapping for this. What do we call it over here? Huh? All right. That looks good. Bam. And done. That's off. That's rebooting. Ah, <sighs> woo, she's loud. She's loud, let's see if those come up. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, you know you want a good, a good DHCP lease. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, we're in. 
Woo! Okay. All right. Okay. So, next, oscilloscope. So, the oscilloscope is going to be the target of the day. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to write some software to communicate with this over, hmm, I guess USB. Huh. It's USB or RS-232, and I think as long as USB exposes a serial port, that'll be pretty easy. Okay, so I'll just put that on my desk. Um, do I have long wires? I kind of don't want long wires. Um, because that would be bad for impedance. So, the other option is, do I have long USB? And yes, I do. I do have very long USB. I have very long USB. plug this in to USB B. Where the fuck would I have USB B? Play with a printer. USB B. Let's fucking go. Plug that into there. Plug that into here. And that's good. Uh, what else do we need? And then we need to power that. Turn on the oscilloscope. And uh, this is the shortest power cable in the world. That's all right. We'll just put it right. Huh? <sighs> All right, let's see if that shows up. It does. Okay. I think we're ready, chat. I think we're ready to raise some code. Fire's burning good. Got that started real nice. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what we can make this thing do. How does that sound, chat? Does that sound good? And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly set up the probe to scope its uh, output. I forget what it, I think it's like a five, or might be five megahertz or a five kilohertz wave. We'll just have it uh, self-probe. Um, okay. Just on channel one. Good. 
looks like I have a trigger set up for single. So we're going to set up uh, full turn off the single shot trigger. Oh, I can just see the DC home. Nice. There we go. Wow, that is... Oh, not terrible. Yeah, one kilohertz. Okay. So, I have a one kilohertz wave coming out. So, that is good. Ah. <sighs> Okay, are you hacking the firmware or controlling it over USB? I don't know. Hard to say. Kind of depends. Um. Okay, so. Let's see if this will work. Turn this on and turn this on. Go up here. So, I should be able to see my power supply. Um, okay, nice. Okay, so we have power supply output, and then I should have, oh, I got to sign in? Oh, what the fuck would this be? Probably default. Hmm. Admin, admin. Oh, nice. Okay, not bad. All right, so, um, I love this thing. I love this thing so much. It's just so good. Um, not a lot of millivolts. Let's see. Um, you are right that it is not a lot of millivolts. I'm trying to think if I even have, I could plug in, I could plug it into this five volt thing. We'll, uh, we'll load up five volts on the power supply over banana to that. Just so we, uh, can test kind of all our instruments here. Ah, uh, just two bananas. Two nanners. We'll do a uh, blue and black. There we go. That's a good one. Uh, we got ground. We're going into channel one. And that should theoretically give me that if I turn on that output. All right, that is pretty good. Okay, so now if I refresh this, we'll see that we have five volts out, 0. 0.2 milliamps, which is what we're uh, supplying to this. Oh, look at that, 4.999, not bad. That's pretty good, that's pretty good. Yeah, these are both really, really, really nice instruments. So this is a HMP4040, which is a four output uh, power supply. Basically, it has like a shit ton of, oh, they got a facelift. But it can do uh, 384 watts and four different outputs, all of them sourced, all of them completely separate. You can daisy chain them together for uh, more voltage. You can put them in parallel for more wattage uh, or for more amperage. Um, this thing's fucking beautiful. I love this device. And then this is a seven and a half digit multimeter, this DMM7510. Uh, if you're not familiar with multimeters, seven and a half digits is honest. It's referring to basically the number of things that are displayed here. Um, so it kind of depends on the range that I have it in. 
Unfortunately, there's not a great UI for this. So I might just go over there and change the voltage. Uh, probably to something like one volt. Beautiful. Okay, so what I did is I changed the output and basically the place where seven and a half digit comes from is there are seven and a half digits here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the half is that this digit can be from zero to five or zero to four, right? And then basically once that goes to five, this will flip over into the next voltage range, which be which would be the 10 volt range. So right now this is in the one volt range. Um, and I can go through and I can like look at historical data here to kind of see this. Let me uh, clear this buffer quick. Uh, boy, it's been a hot minute since I've used this active buffer clear. I'm guessing that cleared. Okay, so now I can kind of see this data and I can just see unbelievably small changes. Uh, let's go to a different scale here as well. Let's go to x-axis. I don't know. Um, let's, let's try this. Let's try to show all readings, just see what this does. So here you can kind of see like all these voltage changes over time. So this is not an oscilloscope. This is a multimeter. These are all uh, samplings of the voltage. I think right now, what, what frequency is this sampling at? Um, so this is currently, um, oh, well, let's, let's see what modes we have. So here I can kind of change the performance versus uh, resolution. And I think I can go up to, yeah, I can do 60 readings a second at seven and a half. And I think I start dropping down here. So yeah, I can do 60 readings a second at uh, seven and a half digits. Um, and that's the mode that I kind of traditionally will have this device in. You say it's a multimeter, but it's a kilohertz oscilloscope. It's actually just an unbelievably strong machine. The, these variances in these voltages are fucking tiny, right? Like, what is this scale here? Um, yeah, you can see the standard deviation, the max and the min. It, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Cause what are we actually measuring and plotting right now? We're plotting, um, uh, this is hundred nanovolts, right? Cause this would be microvolts and this would be hundred nanovolts. So this is giving me my voltage reading down to uh, 100 nanovolts, which is ridiculous. <laughs> which is ridiculous. This is over uh, Ethernet. Most devices like this are over Ethernet. Um, you can see that we're actually over LAN. Oh, th this device is just amazing. <laughs> it, it really is. It just like, ugh. Both of these are really fun, but this is the one that's just mind-blowingly nice. It's crazy because I can, you can, like, basically watch someone walk around the house with this device. Like, someone picking up static on their feet 10 feet away will show up here as a spike. Which is really fun. <laughs> For nearly 5k, it better be good. I mean, it's just the price of a 7.5 digit multimeter, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is we want to figure out if we can get good data out of, um, out of our oscilloscope. And the way that we're going to do that is we're probably going to end up figuring out how the oscilloscope works. And then we're going to command it to give us data. And then once we command it to give us data, then we'll start parsing the data and we'll probably have to calibrate the device and, and figure out how it works. So I should have a USB device that showed up, um, which I do. 
but I don't know what it is. So it definitely shows up. USB TMC dev. So do I have like a TMC device? Do I have a TTY S whatever? Um. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that was. I wonder what caused that that increase there. That's kind of interesting. Um. Pfft. Hmm. Uh, no, it's not a hid device. Hmm. Full speed serial device. I feel like if it USB TMC. Okay, what is that? Is it? Oh, there is a thing. Okay. Uh so I should be able to just screen this. We'll uh chown this pleb pleb. And then we'll screen dev uh USB T M C zero. Okay, I don't have screen installed. Nice. Okay. Uh, we'll just cat that and we'll echo ASDF to dev USB TMC0. Okay, okay. It's like, hmm. Connection timed out. The fuck is that? Okay. I'm guessing it's just a serial protocol. Um, GPIB over USB. Okay, so this is a DS1-1052E, I think is the oscilloscope. Let's just go find the manual for this. Um... DS1052E... And hopefully this is... Nope, that's insufficient. Uh... Well... Hmm. Service guide? Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? DS1052E. Okay. Oh, this might be interesting to archive and save. Um, power inspection, testing. Oh, here we go. USB device interface test. Okay. I.O. selection, USB or RS-232. RS-232. Uh, we could do serial, but I'm, we're going to get more data out of that. So that should be better. We don't have the logic analyzer. Uh, let's see. Does it talk about the protocol? It probably will. Calibration. Assembly and disassemblies. Okay, cool that they have disassembly. This is a good manual. Maybe not. Maybe they don't have it for this. Well, that's fucking dumb. Uh, okay. Uh, DS1052E service manual. Okay. Um. What else do I want? Hmm. I don't think I'm actually going to have to talk USB to this. Let's see what Linux does for these devices. Experimental driver? Hmm. Hmm. I really hope I don't have to do ioctals. That would kind of suck. What's this? That is some um, go shit. I don't. I don't want that. That's trash. Probably garbage code. Um, that's just Linux. <sighs> yeah, I don't care about that. A dot write? Can I just read and write things? Like, that's what I would expect. Let's, uh, I can get screen quick. 
I think I used some other thing for terminals, but I can't remember what I called it. Hmm. Unfortunate. Do I have stream term? No, I don't. All right, we'll just use this font then. Can probably Python it? Yeah, we're not going to use Python because Python is a fucking garbage language. Um, at misc screen. I'm guessing it's a serial device. It's just cat probably doing cat things because that's how cat works. Um... <laughs> Ooh, let's see what this does. Let's just look at the code. Probably fucking easier than someone's shitty stack overflow guide. Uh, let's see how it does reads. Yeah, it's they have a read and write API. Like this is going to be fucking easy, okay? I don't know why it, yeah, it's it's just, uh, let's just start writing some code. It's just going to be better. Uh, cargo new bin. What do we want to call this project? Cargo new bin. Rigel. Uh, data. Okay. We'll just go with that for now. Toastitos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So then, uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to open that. Open dev TTY. No, it wasn't TTY something. It was what? USB TMC? That? Was it that? Uh, use standard FS file. And then we'll clean up this code once it actually works and does anything. So we'll just do fd.read. Uh, let me buff is OU8024. Uh, mute buff. Uh, let's see. Uh, OU8024. Uh, mute buff. And then we'll do print ln of buff. Uh huh. Okay. And then we'll just do this in a loop. That is some good code right there. All right. I see no reason why this code isn't going to work and be awesome. Uh, cargo run. Okay, well, that's not, not a good sign. Uh, standard IO read. Ah, okay, so that's probably an error. We'll just check that error. That's just going to be a timeout, probably because we haven't sent it a command. So all we'll do is we'll just send it a command. I'm sure it's that easy, right? Uh fd.write asked if, and probably like a cr and an lf. Probably gonna get this thing to squeal. Um. Mm, yeah, and then we'll write bytes. No! Okay. Uh, Rigel, you, you, uh, TMC spec. Okay, maybe. Ah, software package. Okay, don't care about that. This is some other device. That's probably close enough. Well, that just doesn't. Okay, sick. Nice. Hmm. Ooh, what is this? Okay, okay. This is some different device, but it's Rigel. Oh, it looks like a digital multimeter. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Looks like a five and a half or a six and a half digit. Mm, USB. USB, USB, USB. Hmm. Okay, uh, TMC commands, Python drivers, okay, hmm, let's see, uh, let's see this Python code, oh, not terrible, not terrible, okay, uh, out P, out P channel 2, this is, uh, 
USB TMC zero, and then we can do things where we we send these commands. You just write the command out with the sleep. So this is exactly the sort of thing we want to avoid. Just we don't want to put sleeps in our code. Oh, IDN. There we go. Um, I think it's a, this should identify the device. <sighs> well, that doesn't work. So let's see. Let's see what line ending it wants. Does it want any line ending? No. No. No, that's not great. Hmm, that's not what we want. Oh, programming guide! Ah, here we go. This will be it. DS1000E 2019. Oh, fuck yeah. Yep, this is what we wanted. I, it's so hard to find these, but now that we have it, we're done. Um, okay, so we just open the device and then we send commands. Yeah, we can ignore this because we're just gonna do that ourselves. Um, acquire, type, everything, SCPI, starts with a colon, okay, once again, terrible, terrible protocol, run, stop, single stop, land commands, auto scale, uh, channel commands, oh, do I have to colon IDN? No, no. Let's see if there's a way to identify the device. That would be nice. System RAM, query the number of analog channels on the instrument. Okay, sure, we'll do that. That's concrete. No. No. Uh, we'll unwrap that. Bad FD. Hmm. Why would I be getting a bad FD? Huh. Let's see what they do in Python. Pretty sure they just open the device and write to it. Uh. Self dot reset. Uh, oh, star RST. Okay, I like that. But if I'm getting bad FD, that's not great. Um, let me just uh plug it back in. We'll just do that. Turn it on, turn it off, that'll probably fix it. Uh, because that's probably roughly the quality of code that's running on it. <laughs> I also have the long active USB cable and I don't have the power hooked up to it, but I can't imagine this needs power, so it should be fine unpowered. But if I have to change that, I can. Um, Rigel Homebrew Wiki. Oh, nice. Not bad. Reset vector built with that. Written in Scratch. Hmm. I am thinking that we should just write our own OS for it. I think that ultimately would be the best solution because I can guarantee you that whatever existing code they have on there is shit and probably does not allow us to get access to data that it's capable of getting. Permission denied. Plub plub dev uh, USB TMC. Bad file descriptor. Huh. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna, hmm, let me see. Hmm. 
I'm just gonna make sure it's not the USB cable that's giving it a, a fuss. Just in case. It's gonna happen with these shit devices sometimes. Um. Alright, so that's booting up. We'll see if this does anything different, but probably not. Hasn't come up yet. Uh... Come on, wake up. Okay. Uh, pseudo child not bad FD. What the fuck? Why would that be a thing? Uh, let's try pseudo. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, nope. Nope. Uh... That's fucking dumb. Why, though? Hmm. Hmm. Um... That's kind of stupid. I don't have to, like, ioctal it or something, do I? Hmm. Uh... Is it this? No. Um. Uh. What? What? Hmm. Why can't I find this? Where was this in uh, Linux that we had open? So we did have this open, didn't we? But who knows where? Fuck. Um. Hmm. Something feels wrong here. Uh What the fuck? Who created this file? USB bulk message Drivers USB class USB TMC dot C Does it remove these? What? What the fuck? Um. Oh, yeah, I guess, uh, new kernel version. Okay, uh, USB TMC, now I'll find it. There it is. Okay, much better. Uh, C tags are dot. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how shitty this driver is. I'm sure it's terrible. 
I, I mean, I'm sure it's great because it's open source code, which means it's, you know, whatever. Come on, C tags. It'd be nice if they knew how to use threads for C tags. Wouldn't that be cool? Imagine opening multiple files in parallel. What a what a fucking concept. How much of one core is this using right now? Probably a lot of it. Oh yeah, hundred percent of one core. Fuck yeah. You're killing it, C tags. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Oh, now you're doing sort. Nice. Not bad. Okay. Alright, uh tag USB TMC read. So this is what we're hitting. And there's uh actually we want USB TMC write. Or uh, let's just look at USB TMC open. So we know that we're hitting open. Uh, find interface, KZ alloc, allocates this stuff, sets up private data, return zero. So we know that all of this stuff is successful. Uh, TMC read. Here, it... Uh, that's bulk callback. Okay, here's the actual code. Get the file data. Came alloc that. If it's zombie... Uh, actually, we want write. USB TMC write. Uh, Eno dev. I'm getting bad FD, which is actually higher up in the stack. Uh... Hmm. What could be happening? Sure, another process doesn't have that FD open? Hmm. Uh, shouldn't, but we'll see. Let's see. That's so fucking weird. Uh, USB TMC zero. Uh, all right. LSOV. Yep. I'm not hitting the driver. It's Linux preventing me from getting here. Um, and that means if it's Linux's fault, then something is not happy about it. See the note? Is it a chance that it could be a bad USB cable? It's not a permissions issue. Mm. That is exactly what I'm going to want to do. Uh, let's see. Hmm. What the fuck would be causing that? Is it rust? Is it a rust problem? I wonder if rust does some dumb shit to it. Not TTY USB. Uh, bu 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 what is this? T USB TMC zero. Oh, read write. If FD is negative one, uh, pair. Uh, open error. Return negative one. Return zero. Include fcncl.h. Okay, and then we'll do printf percent d n of write of FD asked if of four. Great. Okay, so it's Rust. <sighs> Rust, you motherfucker. <sighs> yep. 
Or is it failing on... No, it's failing on right. Does ASDF run on Rust? Yeah, it, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't have an effect. Um, yeah. Well, that's dumb. I'm a fucking idiot. Shut up, chat. Shut up, chat. Uh, mm. Okay, so uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that we had that right from the start. So that's a really cool program. Okay, so we're able to identify that this is a DS1102E, uh, which is pretty good. First try, no problems there. Um, hmm, hmm. Okay. Okay, so what do we want to do? We just want to get the raw data from it. We want to dump its memory. Uh, let's see what its memory is. So what we're going to do is we do want to set the memory depth. M depth. Okay. So this is going to set or query the memory depth of the oscilloscope. So what we want to do is we want to get the maximum memory depth. We want big, big depth. So first thing that we're going to do here is uh, we're going to query um, acquire m depth. So this is going to tell us the depth. OK, that's normal. Um, and then I think we don't want normal. M depth refer to explanation single channel okay so when you enable multiple channels that makes sense so if you think about it they basically have RAM somewhere in this device they just have RAM so when you have both channels enabled you actually lose half of your memory depth all of these get halved which makes sense um, set it to a specific number of points interesting can I do that I've seen that there, you can do long. Um, can I do this, mdep long, and see what happens? Nope, that didn't work. Um, let's see if I can actually set this. Long. Oh, it just didn't. Oh my god, there's a- oh my god, there's a reason they have a sleep. 
There is, isn't there? Oh, fuck off. Uh, no. Please, no. Please, no. Oh, yep, there's no response to Norm. Oh, fuck off. Are you kidding me? <sighs> so if I do this, if I, if I command it to go long, it'll print Norm. And then if I comment this out so I'm not commanding it anymore, it's in long mode. God damn it, what a piece of shit. Nice. Okay. I hate everything. I hate, I hate, I hate it. I hate, I hate it. We're gonna get this to work, and then we'll see if we can just write our own OS for this. Um, what a piece of shit. What a, what a piece of shit. Scammed? Who got scammed? Who redeemed some? Oh, okay. Oh, god damn it. Uh, yeah. So right now we're just figuring out how Rigel works. Um, it's a really nice uh device. Uh, so we're just gonna wrap uh some buff readers, some buff writers. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna be communicating with this device over these uh readers and writers. Uh, it should be pretty. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward stuff. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna communicate with this device and we're gonna convince it uh, the read uh, buffer for the device. And this is uh, the writes buffer for the device. And we're just gonna make a way that we can communicate this. So Rigel uh, shitty DS1052E. Okay, and DS101, what is it? DS, uh, this. Mm-hmm. Uh, perfect. So we have a buff reader and a buff writer. We're just gonna implement, uh, implement some code here so we can open a device and we'll just say devices impl as ref path. Okay, and this will uh, open the Rigel device such as uh, uh, dev ttu sb tmc zero. Okay, and then we'll make this public. We can make this structure public. There's some pretty basic stuff here. FD is equal to uh, this. So we'll open the file. Uh, open the file for read write. We'll do this, read write, open. Then this will do map error, um, error open. Okay, this will return a result of uh, self, and then we'll do panic. Okay, just so we don't have to write that code, we'll comment this out, because that is ass. Let device dev is equal to rigol open dev uh, USB TMC0. Put a question mark on that. This will re also return a result. Uh, okay. Okay, that's some pretty good code. Then we'll do type result t is equal to standard result result t of error. Say this is a wrapper around uh, error. That. Okay, and then enum error drive debug. Uh, error types for this crate, and then this will be open, failed to open device. Uh, standard IO error. Fuck. 
Uh, use standard path, path. Okay, read write. This should be uh, dev dot into. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Can't leak private type. Yeah, that's private. And there we go. Pretty good. Explicit panic. Um, and then we'll just return a self. Read. Uh, buff reader new fd dot clone. Actually, can I do? Hmm. Let's see what we have access to. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um. Try clone. Map error error clone. Okay, and then here we'll say. Clone standard IO error uh, failed to duplicate uh, file descriptor for both sides of the pipe. Okay, and then we do that, and then we'll do write is buff writer new of FD. And this is okay. Fuck yeah. All right, and now we can do, um, hmm. Mem depth. Acquire M depth. So we'll do this. Um, set the memory depth for the device. Uh, pub fn. Actually, we'll do get the uh, memory depth self. Does that need to be mute? Mm, I don't know if it does. Result, uh, mem depth. Okay. Enum mem depth drive debug clone copy. Uh, memory depth for the device. And this is normal. Uh, normal memory depth. And then this is long memory depth. And this is long. Okay, and then we'll do uh, self dot. Um, okay, get mem depth. Uh, failed to get memory depth for the device. Okay, we could honestly make this just uh, failed to send command to device, and then we'll just say uh, write, bam. Then we'll do self dot write dot write, sick. Uh, and then we're gonna send whatever the query is before uh, acquisition memory depth. Okay, uh, map error error write. Okay, uh, right, uh, request memory depth, uh, self.write.flush, map, error, error, right. Okay, and then get the response. Self. Uh, let mute buff is O U8. Mm, no. Mm. Um. Hmm. Do I even want buffered readers and writers? Probably not. Yeah, it's just pointless. We're just gonna be flushing every time, so it doesn't matter. All right, so we can get rid of that, uh, the backing file. Okay, file, buff reader, buff writer can be gone now. Read and write, go down to file. Then, uh, we shouldn't need flush. Anymore, not in Rust. Um. Okay, there we go. That's uh, all right. Got rid of some code there. Not bad. That's what I like to see. Um. Self dot fd dot right. Self dot fd dot read. Yeah. Mute self dot buff. Uh. Map error error read. Eh, pub fn read, mm, mute self result, 
Uh, slice of bytes. Okay, read uh, data from the device. Self fd dot read. Okay, uh, buff vec u8. Uh, buffer for uh, storage during reads. Okay, and then we'll do buff dot buff is equal to vec ou8. I don't know, probably 32k is sufficient. We'll see if we need to change that as time goes on, because we might have to. Failed to receive. Uh, status from device. This is read. Okay, 63. Good. So we're going to do that. Uh, let len is equal to this, read the data, and then we'll do okay, self dot buff me dot dot len. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, get response self dot fd dot read uh, self dot read, and then this should just give us the data out. Huh? Thoughts, chat? Thoughts? Uh, okay, mem depth long. You piece of shit. Okay. Uh, mem depth. Oh, all right. I see how it is. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Beautiful. Uh, that's L O N G right there. Okay. So then what we'll do is we're gonna match this. And then we're gonna say if it's long, then we'll do okay, uh mem depth long. Uh okay. Uh and then we'll do normal. And this is N-O-R-M. Okay, and everything else we'll do return error error unknown. Mem depth. And then we can just do mm, X. And then we can just do like two vec. I don't like having um I don't like my error types having a lifetime. Obviously, you can have a lifetime on your error types, but usually it's not worth it because I'd rather just allocate when it actually happens. Uh, okay, and this will be unexpected memory depth. Technically, I should implement try from for mem depth. Uh, okay, unknown mem depth. This is a vec u8. Honestly, this can just be a string. Okay. Uh, 66. Obviously, that needs to be successful. And then up here, we can impl try from slice of bytes for mem depth. And then we'll do uh, type error is equal to error. I have to give it the error type for try from, I think. Uh, try from. And then we have a value, which is a slice of bytes. And this will return a uh, result of self, okay? And then we can just take this code, we can move it down here. Um, Yeah, and then this is just val. Okay, and then we'll just say, oh fuck yeah, can we just do this now? Self.fd.read.try into uh, dot map x dot try into uh this is and then something like that okay um what can you not do this
Oh, it's ref U8. Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. Woo! All right. So then this is wrong, obviously. Uh, 41. Problem, 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 problem. What's, what's, what's going on here? Why is this throwing a, a fit? Is it that? Beautiful. Uh, 44. 2 vec. Um, we'll just say vec U8 for now. Um, and then 74, self.read, that, and then try into. Well, that worked. Okay, so then this we can clean up. Uh, uh string from UTF-8, this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And then we'll just do some gross stuff here, and then we'll do map error. Is does this give an error? Yes, I think it does. Um, uh, we'll just say invalid UTF eight, because we're gonna probably do this in a lot of places, and I really don't want to make this error specific to every single fucking one. Uh, that would just be a pain in the ass. Okay, invalid UTF eight string. And I have no idea what this is, what this takes. So let's say U8, maybe the compiler will tell us. Uh, UTF-8 encoding of uh, received data. Uh, 48 vec mm, that. Oh, it wants two vec. Yeah, that's standard. Um. Oh, nice, from UTF-8 error. Okay, and that's, uh, I don't know, probably standard stir from UTF-8 error. Gonna be my guess, and I guessed wrong. It's string. Okay, so now I should be able to print this. Nice. Chat, can we get a nice in chat? Dev.fd.write this. Uh, okay, and should do that, and that will just not work, because that's how that works. All right, set the memory depth for the device. Bam! Let's go, chat! Let's go! Uh, depth, and this is a mem depth, and then we have nothing, and then we're gonna do this. Okay, uh, m depth space this. Ah! This is actually gonna be way faster because we don't have to do some string generation. Mem depth norm uh, command is equal to this. And then we'll do normal uh, uh, m depth. Norm, okay, and then we'll do long, okay. Uh, self dot fd dot right command map error error right. Shouldn't read check if read length is equal to buff len? No. Nope. Nope. Um, doesn't matter, because this is, everything in here is strict. Everything in here is strict, and if we get more data than we expect, or a null terminator or something, or a new line, everything in here will fail with an error, because we're being strict. Okay, so now I can do, uh, dev.set memory depth, memory depth, long. Beautiful mem depth. Actually, mem depth, memory depth, G. All right, so that will now set the memory depth. Okay, now if we do normal, we're gonna get long. And you know how we're gonna solve this chat? I know how we're gonna solve this chat. We're gonna do loop, 
self, uh, or we'll just do this. Uh, while self dot memory depth is uh, not equal to depth. Okay, wait for the depth to take effect because this device sucks. Okay. And then we'll just give, uh, should we derive partial EQ or should we do matches? It's kind of weird that, actually, uh, I think we have to do partial EQ here. Okay, there we go. So that's set to normal and then we should be able to set it to long. And there we go, now it works. Take effect, go fuck yourself. Thank you. Um. Okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, all right, so now we can do this. <laughs> Clap it up, chat. Let's get some, let's get some, let's get some claps. Beautiful. Now that is how we deal with shit software being shit. All right. Okay, now what do I want to do? Uh, I want to go into raw mode for wave points. Um, this website is what I'm following because th it's just right. I know, I know exactly what they're doing is right. And the reason I know it's right is because it's on a hobby page that's in all text format. And so you know it's actually going to fucking work. Um, and I think some of these are, uh, raw. Read the waveform data in internal memory. Can be read. Wait, okay. How does this work? Read the waveform data in internal memory. Yes, that's what I want. I want the, give me the raw fucking data so you don't fuck it up with your parsing of it. Uh, read the raw. Okay. And the internal memory can only be read when the oscilloscope is in the stop state. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that that's not a fucking case. It's probably not true. Oh yeah, I do want write. You're right. I want write all. I normally do that. It's just a mistake. Okay? Didn't mean to fuck that one up. There we go. That looks real fucking good. So... What we're gonna do is set this into raw mode. Uh, set the device into raw mode. Uh, raw waveform mode. Such that we get the raw data from the us sample memory. Okay. Second mode into posh mode, yeah. Yeah, you fucking, you fucking what, mate? You, you wanna have a fucking go? You wanna have a fucking jab? Or I'll, fu I'll fucking uh, fuck you up, mate. You, you fucking wanker. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, waveform mode. Any cuties in chat? Damn right, we got some cuties in chat. We got the best cuties here. Waveform mode. Ah, oh, I fucking, oh. I didn't know why go to an accent. Mamma mia, I want the pasta. Ah, the pasta didn't come out too well. Uh, the spaghetti is hard. Uh, too dente. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Woo! Oh. Hmm. Trying to think if I just want to make this all generic. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of do. Uh, raw bytes. Read raw. All right, here we'll uh, pub fn read t which impl 
Uh, try from... No. Yes. Uh, uh, can I do this, chat? This implements try from U8. Ah? Ah, I think we can do this, chat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 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 Plasma, chill! <laughs> Chillax! Uh, read... Yeah, but I gotta send the command. I gotta send the command, so that kind of sucks. I mean, we can do this, but we're only saving so much code. But eventually, I think this will be worth it. Uh, read a value from the device. What font says you're using? No fucking idea. Uh, match. Ooh, here we'll just do self dot read uh, dot try into dot map error error read. Uh, that's. I mean, do we really even need this? Is this does this provide any value? No, it literally doesn't. Fucking just stupid. Literally doesn't save any code. All right, ninety nine waveform mode self. Mm hmm. Okay, and then we'll just do the same thing here for waveform mode. Uh, waveform mode for the device. Okay, waveform mode. We're just gonna do raw. That's the only mode we're going to support for now. And then we'll just count that out, and then this. Uh, S memory depth wave for mode. Uh, and then we'll do, instead of long, we'll do raw. Okay. Unknown wave form mode. Uh, wave form mode. Wave form mode. On fucking real. First goddamn try. Okay, uh, get the waveform mode for the device, and then this is set the waveform mode for the device. Okay, set the waveform mode for the device. Okay, and then we'll do set waveform mode. Ah, oh, and then that's this. Mm-hmm. Wow, great code, great code. Lots of copy pasta, but I don't think there's a better way to do this. Um mood raw this uh raw mm-hmm write the command beautiful and then we'll do wav mode mood we have mode raw, bam. Uh, mood. Okay, mood. Yeah, mood. There we go. Boom, done. Oh, one twenty-nine. Nikito, you should know what the red line in the fucking screen is by now. Come on. Now you're just slacking. Um, it's color column CC80, color column 80. It tells me where 80 characters is. <laughs> okay, and then we'll just do wait for the uh, memory mode to take effect because I'm sure we have to fucking do this here too, don't we? Mm hmm dev dot set waveform mode waveform mode raw beautiful okay
All right. All right. You piece of shit. Should have known better. There we go. Now we got it. Well, that's not great. Um, hmm. I see. Wav mode raw. Okay. Hmm. Uh, 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 uh. I see. Okay. Does this still work? Or is the device fucked? That still works. Okay, so it's a different command. Um... Uh, okay, so this manual is just not accurate. Yeah, this is for something else. It's fine, because it's in the right ballpark. Um, this is, uh, points. What a shit device. Hey, we did it! Okay, uh, okay, and then we should be able to... Dev get uh, waveform data. Uh, channel channel one. Get the waveform data. Okay, so that's gonna be great. We're gonna have to implement that. That's fine. This will be really easy. Get the waveform data. Okay, waveform data. Uh, this will be a uh, slice of bytes, apparently. And then we'll just do self dot, uh, ooh, and then we have the channel. Uh, match channel, uh, let command is equal to match chan, and then we'll do channel, channel one. Okay, and then this is just gonna be a uh, web data. I'm glad I someone sent this link. Uh, cause this link is fucking great. Uh I'm guessing I have channel one. I probably also have channel two. Big, big data. Uh get the waveform command. And then we'll do self.fd.write all. Command map error error right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Ah, oh, sick. Okay. Uh, this is channels for the device. Pub enum channel chan one, chan two, channel one, channel two. Okay. Man. Fuck yeah. We're getting there, chat. We're getting there. I think we're almost we're almost to where I wanted to be. Uh, we can just say these are Bs. That's fine. Okay, result that. Uh, self.fd. Oh, that's gonna get the data, and then what the fuck do we get back? Uh, we'll just do while. Uh, we'll just do loop, and then we'll print ln data. Self dot read uh, in a loop. Okay, that's good. Uh, O2x. All right, that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, that. Wow, that's actually. Hmm. Um. Hmm. That. Hmm. Um. Hmm. All right, let's figure out what the format for this data is. It'll be pretty straightforward, I'm sure. Actually, let's let's buff uh let's up this to like a massive size and just see what happens.
Don't tell me this is fucking... It's clearly not all the data. Why does this do this then? Sick. What a, what a, what a great device. If I request too many bytes, I just like don't... This, it just stops. Oh! No! It's just... Oh my god, is it that slow? Oh my fucking god, it can't be. Didn't the manual say you have to stop? Well, I didn't stop it, but I don't see why that would matter. Once again, it's just undefined behavior, right? Like, I, I don't... I don't even know if it is stopped, to be honest. Uh, dev.fd.write stop. Hmm. Uh... Is that, is that good? Is that, is that what I'm supposed to do? Stop? There, there we go. Hmm. So I get some header -y thing. And then, does this data ever come in? LSUSB. What mode is this in? This device? How do I see that in LSUSB? How do I see the um, timed out? Okay. Okay. What's what's this doing now? Oh, did it crash? Did it crash? Hmm. Is it okay? Maybe it's because I'm sending the stop. Nope. Nope. It just okay. It just no longer works. Okay. Nice. Uh. Hmm. What a piece of shit. It's, uh, she's dead, Jim. We, uh, <laughs> obviously it'll come back around when I reboot it, but, um, nice, nice, good shit. It's unfortunate that it had to come to this chat. This wasn't the intent. <sighs> That's highly unfortunate. Well, that kind of just leaves us one option, doesn't it?
God, the fucking microphone. Jesus Christ. Piece of shit. Fucking thing sucks. The stand sucks. All right. I have the microphone in a weird spot that now will no longer get in the way of the camera. Uh, I'm changing my settings a bit for volume. Let me know if it's a problem. You're probably going to get more background mode, unfortunately. Hmm. What's that? Torx? I kind of wasn't expecting a Torx today. Fuck, wrong size. Looks like we got a... Looks like a T10. Yeah, that's a T10 if I've ever seen one. Okay. Chad, how hard do you think it would be for us to write an operating system for this? Like, I mean, we get execution immediately. I don't think it'd be very hard. I think we could do it in a day. Thoughts? Motherfucker, really? Under there? How do I get the handle off then? Force? I don't want to break it. Now well, let's get a little thingy. I have the service manual? Yes. And you know what the service manual is called? It's called fucking cheating. Hey Siri, turn on flashlight. Okay, I turned flashlight on. Hmm. That's uh I don't I don't really know, honestly. That's pretty advanced. Hmm. Hey Siri, turn off flashlight. Okay, I turned flashlight off. So obviously I want to like push it all to one side and maybe just compress that slightly. Yeah, that's what I can do. I can just compress the plastic, I think. Ah, oh, you fucker. Ah, oh, you bitch. Um, hmm. what's the best tool for this? Okay. The biggest thing is I don't want to damage this. I do like my devices looking nice. Not quite. One more setting. Is that not going to go like that? You piece of shit. Hmm. I don't know. Come on. Come on. Get out of there. Get out of there. Ah. <sighs> hmm. That's, that's really strange. Oh, I could also just not remove the handle. And uh, if this tilts at the right angle, I can just remove this screw. It can't be fully closed and it can't be fully open to access the screw. Huh. See, that wasn't too bad. Obvious, pretty obvious there. Chat, don't act like you provided any valuable input to this. Uh, 
Ta-da! Ta-da! You motherfucker. What are you on about? Hmm. Hmm. How would they have designed this? I also don't have these screws out of here yet, but I don't think they're biting on anything. Uh... Hmm. That's definitely... Should be out of there. So should that one. Steve FDW, thank you so much for the 28 months, hell yeah. Why did they make this so hard? What would they possibly do? Unless it's just force. It could it could just be force. That's always an option. Okay, there's definitely something rigid there. Oh, looks like it's the uh, power connector. Interesting, wouldn't have expected that to be, I thought that was gonna be on a different part. That wasn't going to have that problem, but I was wrong. Okay, so we have to remove these screws. Mainly because the case collides with the screws. I don't think these screws actually have to be removed. Um, God, I need a fucking magnet really bad. I can't get at these screws. Come on. Come on. Why you gotta do me like this? Why won't these screws come out? What the fuck? It's unscrewing through something. There we go, now I got it, okay. Something fell into the scope, that's not great, but whatever. Fucking hell. This screw doesn't even feel like it's attached to anything. Clearly there's something loose in there now from unscrewing that, which is terrible design. Why the fuck is that gonna get over that? Wow, what a terrible fucking design. I'm sure, I'm sure they saved a lot of money with this design. I can't pull the screw out, because it's somehow attached to something still, even though it's loose, because this is the weirdest fucking design I've ever seen of anything. Can't wait to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Oh my fucking god. This is terrible. I am unscrewing it against this plastic spudger. 
by creating friction on the spudger, it can unscrew through it to come out. Wild. Wild. Hmm. Well, I've made no progress there. What a wild design. Do you literally have to press that in? Like that, what? That is absurdly stupid. Have to pull out the power button? That sounds about right. Wouldn't be surprised. Can't wait to find out what's floating around in there. Hmm. It's gonna be really fun to f figure that one out. Um. Hmm. That. It's colliding with, like, the IEC power connector. I literally cannot pull that past that. Wow, what a fucking dumb design. Um... I don't think that's supposed to be protruding that far, because it's not flush. Hmm... Hmm. That's unfortunate. How the fuck would that work? I love how there's something just rattling around in here now. I can try and pull it from this side and see if it can get around that, but... That's clearly not connected to the BNCs or the front panel. So that shouldn't be a snag. These feet are just feet. Take those off. Doesn't matter. Not, not a problem. Um, that's wild. Hmm. That's the only thing I can think it's getting hung up on. Feels like there's something else, kind of. Oh, maybe not. I think it's only that. <sighs> How will I get it past this IEC connector? Like, literally without deforming the plastic. And I think that's what I have to do. I think I literally have to pry it up past that connector. Which is really fucking stupid. And I just, I don't know how I'm going to get at that. Hmm. 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 If only you remove the power button? What's the power button doing? Is there a screw in there? Is there a, is there a screw under the power button? That makes no sense. I don't, I don't see how there would be a screw under the power button. Power button is snagging. The power button is not snagging. The power button, I don't think, comes out with this. That's not, it's not the power button. It's very obviously not the power button, chat. Um. Like, I know what the problem is. Like, I know why it won't open, chat. Like, I'm trying to figure out the best plan of attack. And I think it's like pushing in the IEC connector, but I, God, that's fucking dumb.
How would that even happen? Like, did they literally just deform this when they like smash it in? And I think the answer is yes. Because it forms basically a ramp. That's so fucking stupid. How will I grab that? I don't want to force it, but I think I might be able to force it over that lip. Now, the power button will come into play eventually, right? But that's not my main issue. The power button will be the next thing that's in the way. But, let's see. How would I remove the power button? The only thing I could think of for removing a power button would be grabbing it and pulling it out. Hmm. That's an interesting... Interesting way of doing that. Let's see how that's implemented in there. Hey Siri, turn on flashlight. Okay, I turned flashlight on. So that is Looks like that's just held in there with a clip. So you should be able to just grab it. Easy. Oh wow, it doesn't open? When I removed the power button? It wasn't snagging on the power button? It was snagging on the IEC connector? Oh my god, fuck! Crazy! Crazy! But it was going to snag on the power button, but that is still not the problem. The main problem is this IEC connector that protrudes past the molding. There we go. And just a little bit of force was the play. Okay, so now, uh... Yeah, this, like, shim is what I... Hey Siri, turn off flashlight is what was really... Oh, nice. Fuck yeah. So now it's still rattling. That's good. Okay, I turned flashlight Oh, thanks Siri for responding to something I told you to do, like, fucking 30 seconds ago. Good job. Good job. Okay. So. Now, we're going to have to remove the... This shielding, which should be pretty easy. We have a couple screws up top, and we're gonna have to also that wow, that's deformed. I mean, I'm gonna be pulling it apart anyways, but that's deformed. Um so I'm gonna have to remove the uh actually I can just do that with one of these, can't I? I have to remove the serial port screws. Pretty common on things like this to we have to remove those, and I skipped the right one. Beautiful. Give it a nice shake. Okay. That's good. And... Maybe it got dropped? I don't think so. I think it was probably just never assembled correctly. Seems way more likely to me. Okay, and then this will just pop out on the back. Simple. Yeah, you can tell that shielding is very bent. Um, all right. So, all right, so we have the power supply in there. Um, obviously we want to be a little careful with the power supply because we did just have that plugged into the mains. Um, So, yep, yeah, that's the high voltage warning, high voltage risk of electric shock. Mm hmm yep, yeah, that makes sense. So, hard to say if any of those caps are charged up. There's only one large 
cap. It is a 400 volt cap, so that could have something on it. Oh my god, this board's interesting. So they probably bought... I wonder if they would have bought that power supply. So, it's, uh... Oh yeah, let's find the... There's... There's the rattles. One more. Come on. Come on out. Come on out. Oh. Oh, she's buried in there. Hey! There it is. Alright, two washers. Makes sense. That would make sense why it was so hard to remove those, because I removed things that were backed by washers. So that makes sense there. Okay. But now we know that we have everything out of here. Everything's clean. So, um... How hard would this be to hack? Um, so basically, there's the fan. Kind of tempted to unplug the fan because it's loud and shit. I can't imagine this device puts out that much heat. There's the ground lug. That's pretty good. And all the control board is just on the bottom. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. <sighs> what do I want to do? What do I want to do here, chat? What's the solution? That holds that on. What's that? So the processor's over there, and there's two chips that could be flash over there. And unfortunately, they're just so far in the back. And I really don't want to disassemble this all the way, but I don't know if we're going to have an option. So we're going to continue disassembling this. Um, until it starts to give. Okay. Nice. Beautiful. And this. Good. Okay, this top piece should come off. It does. On. What are you grabbing? There we go. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, so that's off. Uh, next. What's next? Okay, so we can take out the power supply board, and I'm not seeing any other option. I think we will have to take off this power supply board. Um, this stuff is all riveted to the front panel. That's the power supply. I'd be really tempted to figure out what it's actually supplying from the power supply so that we could supply it ourselves without the power supply here. Um, because I'm going to have to take off this power supply board. Hmm. Hmm. Thoughts? Obviously, those connectors going to the panel. And then once I can get in there, I'll be able to read what these chips are. But I just I just can't do that yet, so I think I have to remove this. Is that soldered in there directly? Jesus Christ, it is. This this connector is directly soldered in on this side. So, uh, we'll have to unplug this. Now that board is disconnected. Uh, should be fully disconnected, so we just have to unscrew it. Rip calibration. I can guarantee you this device was calibrated more poorly in whatever fucking place they calibrated this than what I can calibrate it to in my own lab here. There's just no way that this was calibrated to the degree that we'll be able to. So, not too worried about that. 
Now we have a massive, a massive screw. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Is that a T? Let's try a T25, but even that might not be right. Okay. It's not that. It's one size smaller. I have a, a singular massive Torx screw in here. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Look at that chonker. It's a massive screw. Um, and then we just have to remove the grounding lug, which is the same screw. While we try not to... Okay, let's do this. It's just gonna be the best way to do this, chat. It's just gonna be the best way to do this. We gotta find the next thing in the torques. Really? 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 This fucking thing? Oh! This doesn't have mirrored sides. That's so stupid. So you can't grab it with a pliers. Fucking dumb. Alright, we got it anyways. Caps, I know. Being careful. Who remembers how to put it back together? We've done like nothing. <laughs> like we haven't disassembled anything. I would hope that everyone should be able to put a device like this back together from this state. This is pretty basic, uh, stuff. What have we done? We've undone one connector, two connectors now, if you want to include that as a connector. There's the power supply board. That then goes around to the bottom, uh, to this, which... Disconnects. There we go. There's our third connector. And now the power supply board is out. So what I might do is short out that cap. Okay. Oh, yeah. Definitely a little bit of a sparky on there. All right. So that cap should be, uh, should be done for now. So that doesn't feel as spooky. Um. All right. So now, um, now we need to find the flash. And looks like they're gonna have Speed flash on here. Hey Siri, turn on flashlight. Okay, I turned flashlight on. All right, chat. T L zero seven two C. T L zero seven two C. Uh, what is that? Op amp. So not that. Can't read this. Um, that looks like it could be flash. Uh, chat. F. M. Two four. CLO4? Is that a 2400 series logic chip? FM24CL04, I think. Is that it, chat? Otherwise, we have a 4436A. Uh, okay. So that's something. Mm. Motherfucker. Are none of those it?
Hmm. What else could it be? It could be one of these massive packages, but I really fucking hope not. Feral Electric Ram. Yeah, it's some fancy shit. Um. So I see something that's probably definitely Ram. Gotta take this sticker off, unfortunately. More resilient than normal flash? Oh, interesting. That's kind of wild. God, this sticker is not gonna come off, is it? What a piece of shit. Son of a bitch. Should I just take this board out? Yeah. How much pain is that gonna be? Honestly, I think we can just take this board out, so we're gonna do that quick. Uh, Bart will be out in a second. making progress chat we can change the f-stop to like i don't know eight <sighs> fram is basically an evolved old core memory that's fucking amazing never heard of fram before i wonder if that's where they store calibration info that would kind of make sense to me. Oh my god. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to take off this whole thing. Self tappers, nice. Log me some shitty high high pitch self tappers going directly into plastic nice so there's some posts in here i don't know if i'm gonna have to remove those posts I see. So this is this is the point I was dreading, which is basically having to take off all of the all of these, which actually is way easier than I expected. Okay, at least those were. <laughs> Motherfucker. Get out. Get out of there. Oh. What's wrong with the O-scope? The software sucks. That's what's wrong with it. It's not written in rust, exactly. Plushie, oh fuck, I gotta get my plushies out. Woo! There we go. There's the, the uh, buttons. It's not bad, not bad. Progress. Um, now we're left with kind of this unit. It's a great time to clean the screen. Um, fuck. It just never ends, does it? What is that? 
Look at the w look at the way they do this ground on the USB port. You see that? I'm trying to get the right angle. What the fuck? That is sketch. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's because the USB port isn't making contact with the chassis, so they have to run a little piece there. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, so next. We want to take out this board, which I've loosened. Oh, fuck me. I'm going to have to cut that. I'm going to have to cut that to take it out. Because that is directly... It, it's... Oh my god, piece of shit. Yeah, it's riveted and then it's soldered. It's riveted on one side and soldered on the other side. So I either have to drill up the rivet, which I don't want to do. Um... Cool. Cool. Well, um, <sighs> such fucking design. Okay, then the rest. I think these BNCs, I can just undo, undo the fan. So the fan's disconnected now. So let's undo these BNCs quickly. Mm, that didn't sound great. Oh. What? Okay. And this one. All right. Does it attach to the main board with a connector? No. It's, uh, that would be, that would have to be damaged to get out. Little shitty washer. All right. And this one, we'll just keep loosening it a bit more to get over the resistance of that washer, which it's really kind of in there. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. oh. These pieces of shit. Hey Siri, turn off flashlight. Okay. I turned flashlight off. Monkas? I think this is just cross-threaded. Literally. God. I don't know. The threads look okay. Maybe they're just out of spec. Wow. It's never good when you're unscrewing something and it hits resistance again while unscrewing it. It's never a good sign. There we go. Oh my god, this fucking thing! I'm not convinced that that is not cross-threaded.
It is not even making contact and it's just... Oh my god, no way. I can feel the threads just being shit there. Oh god, that's bad. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's disgusting! Oh, that's so disgusting. Oh, what a terrible, terrible, terrible screw. Oh yeah, those threads are fucked. Nice. Okay, um... Now, theoretically, this dev board should- this board should only be hanging on by that one connection. And these little connectors in here, these little ribbon connectors, which I'll, uh, I'll undo those now. Not bad ribbon connectors. Good action. You can do one side at a time. There we go. Nice. So, ribbon connectors are disconnected, which is probably the screen and stuff. And that leaves one thing. There is one thing left holding everything together. Motherfucker. Checking my clearances there. It's good. And, yep. Just, uh, get in there with a good little, uh, there we Can I get time? Time? Time! Stop the timer, chat. How long was that? Too long? Yeah, I agree. All right, so that is a board. Uh, we have one chip on the bottom that could be flash. Please, please be flash. Please be flash. I don't want to do a big chip. I don't want to do a big chip. Chat, 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 chat. 731699K. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Not seeing anything about that. 7316. Nine eight K T I T I instruments Texas instruments T I that seven three sixteen a beam former never seen one of those before T X seven three one six sixteen channel three level or eight channel 5 level transmitter with integrated transmit beam former. I don't know if that's what it is, but I could maybe see that being that's what it is. Knapsack, thank you so much for the subarino. I, I've got bad news for you, chat, and it's that it's going to be this large chip. This is going to be the flash, and it's gonna be one of those fucking massive pins. I, and I just... TSOP 48, yeah. Uh. 
And the sticker sucks ass. Fuck off. Fuck right off. You, you know they made that sticker intentionally to be shit. Uh, oh, there it is. JTAG, where we're going, we don't do, we don't do JTAG. Desoldering TSOP 40A is way more of a pain in the ass than JTAG, yeah. yeah it really is. I don't want to do it. Chat, give me the bad news. Give me the bad news, chat. S29GL, maybe? It's like still really gummy. But yeah, I, I think it's. But in reality, the ROM's gonna be stored on the NVRAM. <laughs> it's Norflash. Do you think that, um, do you think that the FPGAs are programmed by the CPU? Like, do you think that the CPU, do you think if we want to write an OS for this, that we would have to program the FPGAs? Or do you think they're configured to, to boot up on their own? Um, FPGAs almost certainly do their own thing. Okay. Because basically I'm curious if I'll be able to just basically directly find wherever the DMA is of the raw data. All I care about is the raw data from the ADC. Once you give me raw data from the ADC, we can, we can start doing crazy stuff, right? Um, God, I cannot get that readable. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whoever invented stickers is just the worst. FPGA, Bitstream, or Norflash? This is definitely going to be Flash. There's no way that, like, the FPGA is over here. This is the CPU. This is probably RAM. And then this is the, this is going to be the, the contents of that. The, like, the FPGAs, 
There's an FPGA here, and then there's a Lattice. Maybe FPGA, maybe CPLD. And then this is just definitely going to be the uh, the Flash. There, there's just, it would be ridiculous to route like that. That would make no sense. Where's the RAM? This is the RAM. So this is the CPU. This is the RAM. This is going to be the Flash. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. All right, chat. S two nine G L zero six four N nine zero T F one zero four. You get that? And yeah, that link is probably it. Yeah, the one's an I, yeah. Yep. 64 megabit. 110 nanometer, that's some high-tech shit. <sighs> and this is specifically made by Spansion. Yeah, I think this is the right data sheet. Or, this is... Um... TF... I... I think it's I-04. Yep, it's probably this I-040. Let's see if I can get this. I think there seems to be hits for this very specific number. And let's take a look here, see if we can get this. Save. Uh, S-29-G-L. 064N. That's obviously all that matters, and then we can go and look. This is actually a nice manual. We do have the uh, the info here. Um, so let's go and find. Let's go and find the information of. Uh, I like. What would it be called? Like the decoding whatever 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 decoding the it's just gonna be a table that tells you how to read the chip number um here we go ordering information so we're running one of these so uh oh that's for 32n we're on 64n so we have 64 megabit page mode flash memory unconditionally then we had uh, is that the state of Wisconsin on the shirt? It is. Then after that, after the N, we have uh, nine zero. Okay, it's always nine zero. Uh, 90 nanosecond latency, makes sense. T, it's a TSOP pinout. F is it's lead free. I is that it's industrial. Zero four is that it's uh, x8x16. Um, and then that's the packaging type. So obviously we don't have that. We just have 04, which is bottom boot sector, protects bottom two access sectors. VIL protects bottom. Okay. So, um, so that should be specifically what we have is this, I'm pretty sure. And everything else lines up. 
So, uh, chat, what do we have to do? What is my, what is my programmer chat? What's the shitty programmer that everyone uses? Um... X Giku Pro. Uh, or more specifically, this is uh this is a, a TL eight six six plus two plus. Um and Ooh, they have a new one. Oh, doesn't that look sleek? Look at this. Super performance, super speed, super small portable. Cool appearance. Low power consumption. Super stability. Looks like it's just the same thing. Um, anyways, uh, what we can do is look at the IC list. And um, this is for the... TL 8662, uh, recently updated. This stuff all gets updated frequently. Um, so now, um, S29 GL064, uh, N90 TF I04. Fuck yeah! Let's go, chat! <sighs> Uh, SP reversing dot MD. Okay. Uh, flash chip is this. And it's a TSOP 48. Whoo! Chat, who's ready to lift a TSOP 48, baby? Let's uh let's clear off my desk here, make some space. Uh, and we'll lift this chip off. Should be really easy. Um probably done screwing things for a while. So I'll put that away. Uh all these buttons and knobs and feet and stuff go in here. There we go. Uh, spudgers we don't need, prying tools we don't need, let's put all these away. That readme is so clean, hell yeah, I hope it is. Flash extract, I'll maybe take a look. Um, don't need the noy packs. And then everything else, I think I can just stuff to the side, make enough room, and this is here, and then I'm going to clean off my desk quick, and then we'll do this. All right, chat, let's go to uh, f-stop 1.4 again. Um, here we have the board in question. We're just gonna get this all ready for uh, a little bit of fun. How does that sound, chat?
then I just need a power cable to be able to put one of these. All right, so let's see how this goes. Let that heat up and then uh, we'll just float the board over here. Then we're gonna Support the board a bit. Clamp that down, and then we'll clamp another one down. Uh, just right here. Okay. Fancy board clamps, yeah, these things are fucking unreal. They're so nice. They're so nice, chat. Alright, um, let's see if we can do this. All right, now I have it focusing specifically on like this spot. This is the chip that will be lifted. Should be pretty good. Gonna give it a little squirt flux just for it to play a little bit better. All right. So that's all fluxed up. Then we'll see how we can lift this off. I need my kind of all my different tweezers. What's the flux for? It'll just make the solder flow a little bit better and not oxidize as badly when it starts to melt. It just should make it uh, come off just a smidgen easier. Okay, I'm gonna get all my tweezers ready because I don't know which one I want to use for this. Um, can I get under it? No. So sometimes with these T-Sops, you kind of do one side at a time. It's not great. Not the best thing in the world. Uh, I don't know what tool's feeling the best here. Okay. Well, we're going to play it by ear. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to turn the flow rate up just a bit. I'm running at about 10 liters a minute of flow. Should be good. And then we'll just turn this on just for the... Uh... Just for the fumes. Still have a view. I might... Hmm. I don't have a great 
light source. Let me see what I can get you. Is that gonna stay? Yes. Okay. I think that is bright enough to use f-stop 16. And let me see how good of an angle I can get. Use this is the chip in question. Um It's kind of awkward here. Trying to get the shadows right. I gotta do it from this side because it's reflecting off this into my eyes, which is really uncomfortable. Arguably this, this side is where I actually want the lighting. Thoughts? How's that look? Um, I think this is just gonna do. Okay, what temp is it at? I don't have temps, it's on setting four and a half. It's basically exactly medium. But that should be heated up just fine. Um, let's see if it wants to play ball. I don't think that's taking it. Oh, it is. Beautiful. Okay, so I need a better way of grabbing this chip. It's kind of always the hardest part, is having a good way to grab the chip. There it is. There it is. Beautiful. Um, I think I get a, it did a pretty good job. No bent pins. No bridges. That was good fucking execution. You won't be able to see that with that f-stop. No fucking way. Mm, I don't know where it's focusing. Ah, ah, ah. Come on, you fucker. Well, there it is. She came off in really good shape. Um, nothing else moved. Everything else looks great. Bottom of the board. Nothing was even close uh, to being hit there. There's nothing on the bottom of the board. Um, yeah, we nailed it. That was a really good lift. Well done, chat. Really good job. I'm gonna turn off my uh, station, we can turn this off. All right. 
Good job, chat. That was honestly expertly done. Uh, I can cover up some of these tweezers so I don't die because they're really sharp. That was pretty fucking easy, chat. Well done. Those vices are 60 bucks a piece? Yes, and they're worth ev every piece. It's really important to understand that work holding is like the, the biggest deal in doing almost any physical work. Don't skimp on your vices and work holding equipment. Just don't. It's a waste. All right, so, uh, I've got a TSOP 48 here. Um, let's, so, uh, let's just get this in, in here. These can sometimes be a little bit tough. Who makes the vice? Uh, Heiko, Hacko. It's very easy to fuck up these, uh, this alignment, so. But, I think that is in there. Hard to say, you kind of don't know until you program. Sometimes you have to reseed them a couple times, but... This is basically what I've done, is I've put the chip inside of this socket, and then that will break it out to this, uh, which then, I don't know, somehow connects to this programmer once I get another adapter. TSOP32. Oh my god, chat. We have interesting news there. Um, that's TSOP 40D. Is that correct? That's TSOP 32. TSOP 48. Let's go. Alright, so then we're going to put this board into here, into the programmer. If we can get it in there. That looks pretty good. Did I hit it? Looks like I should have. Um, not in there great, though. Sometimes there's only so good a fitment you're gonna get out of these devices. Um, God, that's really straddling that gap. I'm probably making enough contact. It, this just won't sit flat in here, unfortunately. Oh, there it goes. Just a little bit of force. That's in there. Locked. Okay, so now I have a programmer here. Um, and then I can put the chip on top of this. And there's arrows for orientation everywhere. And I'm just going to socket this board on top. And this should, theoretically, take all of the pins on here through this socket through this top board, into the second board, into the pins, into this programmer, which I can now connect to USB, into my computer, with a USB-B again. God damn it.
Um, unfortunately, the software really sucks, and I don't think I have a Windows VM on this computer. Let me see if I do. Uh, vert manager. Hmm, no Windows VM. Well, we'll just set up a Windows VM. We'll just chat. We'll, we'll chill while we're doing this. Okay. There needs to be an open source Flash programmer. Yeah. This is good enough. All of them are so shit. Yeah, welcome to all software in the world. Okay, so this will just be uh, Windows. Uh, this will be Windows 10. So uh, let's do this. Eh. How's that? Little Kiwi Wampus. There we go. Actually nailed it. Nailed it! Nailed it, chat! Hopefully the microphone isn't terrible in that position, but it's out of frame, it's facing me, uh, gains a little bit higher because of it, but hopefully it's fine. I don't know if the audio quality isn't terrible. Let's get, uh, this. Log in. This. There's no way this software is going to work on Windows 10 or Windows 11. So, what we need is this software supports Visa T, Win 10. Um, yeah. Uh, overseas and local. I see. Well, I think I'm overseas. So we're just gonna... I guess... Ah. Yes, what version is it on? Let's look at the supported IC list. Uh, 1181. 1181? Ah? Okay, let's get uh, Windows VM. Windows 10. We'll just get latest Windows 10. Actually, we can probably get uh, LTSC. Ooh, there's an LTSC from November 2021. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, don't, don't, don't threaten me with a good time. You know that I'm always using LTSC if I can. Uh, Windows Enterprise LTSC 2021. Sweet! Sweet! Big, big if true. All right, it's uh, we're just waiting for that. Okay. So, how's everyone doing today? Is this gonna work, chat? I mean, why the fuck wouldn't this work? The question is, how do we... Je suis drunk. <laughs> Hello, drunk. Terrible out of 40. We can I mean more. I'm sorry, Desu. Taking a break from studying. How about you? I don't know what I'm doing. This is apparently what I'm doing, chat. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Um, Because I think, theoretically, we could... Figure out 
how to get the raw data from the ADC or the FPGA in, in, basically we can write an OS for this. All we have to do is we have to reverse out how to communicate over USB, how to communicate, because that's the only port we have. Failed? Well, fuck you. I'll probably get a better server this time. Would need to store it into RAM? No, so there will be dedicated RAM on this that will be very fast and designed to like direct. Basically, look, I've never designed or looked at an oscilloscope, but there's no fucking way that this shit or any RAM on the application processor is fast enough to handle the data that comes off of the oscilloscope. So there will be some sample memory that is not this, it's not the actual like general purpose RAM for the chip, it will be sample memory that's somewhere else. And there's gonna be some way that we can access that sample memory from software. And there's probably going to be some way that we can program, maybe over SPY, to basically set the relays, the modes, the, the like voltage, you know, like all of the settings that physically affect the analog sampling of the device. But all of those samples are just gonna go into one massive buffer, which we probably can directly access from software, right? So all we need to do on the chip is to handle user interface, handle USB port traffic, and handle, um, and we need to be able to handle uh, like the frame buffer. So what, what theoretically what we could do is we could figure out how to communicate with the frame buffer and how to communicate with the uh, like sample memory to get the raw samples. And theoretically, we could make our own GUI that's responsive and isn't shit. And like we can physically access from software all of the things that are, this device can possibly do. So anything that was a software restriction or a software whatever the fuck, uh, we could theoretically just do it. We could have, we could literally make like the best open source oscilloscope UI. And if people actually wanted to get on board and do this and help out, which I'm only going to do the low level stuff. Um, but if this is something that people wanted to build on, I wouldn't be surprised if we could literally start the industry standard oscilloscope OS. Like, we could probably literally change what people want and expect out of their oscilloscopes such that, like, manufacturers would start to just build their shit onto ROS. Obviously, I don't have enough time to do that. I have enough time to hack into this and maybe get some sample buffer data out and maybe draw something, draw a basic graph on the screen. Um, but, like, other people can figure out the other shit. <laughs> Yeah. Have you heard of Scope Hal? No, I haven't, but I'm just going to assume that any software that already exists sucks. Um, so some of the things that I'd like to do is figure out um, what sorts of IO we have on this device. And basically, um, Here's the USB port. So we have a USB port on the device. Um, and then we have a serial port. Obviously, there's no way we're gonna push data through the serial port. There's a chance that with software, we could maybe get like megabit out of here, depending on the chip that they have on here. So let's go figure out what that is now. Um, we can kind of just go through and look at these chips. And this will tell us what we are physically limited in doing, right? That's all that matters to me. So I see a chip here right by the serial port. It's uh, ADM202EA. It's probably a fucking serial controller. ESD protection. RS-232 line drivers. Okay, so that's the RS-232 line drivers. Um, But that's not actually doing digital stuff. What is this doing? It's literally just... Buffers on the lines. Interesting. 
Does this allow the serial port to run in five and three? No, it's just five volt logic. Um, it could be the system on a chip just has a serial port that directly is wired out, and we could we could figure that one out. We also have another chip here that's by the USB port, and this could be the USB controller, which I'm guessing they probably. Due to the age of this device, they probably do not actually have a USB controller on that uh, device that, I guess, black fin is what that is. So we have a ISP13628D, and I'm guessing this is USB something. Some strange, this chip. Oh, so people have no idea what this is. Uh, oh, black, that's the DSP. Interesting. That's the flash. Hynix RAM. A CPLD. Yep, Altera Max CPLD. And then we have uh, Altera. Nice. There's an Ethernet controller, but that's on a later device. This is a different device. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what this lattice chip is. LCM X0256E. CPLD. Some sort of glue logic CPLD sort of thing. Um, well, I can just start getting these other chips readable. People have made crates for driving these scopes? Yeah, but this is like over USB or whatever, right? Um... Like, I don't care about communicating with this device. I want to run on the device. I love the mechanically etched off parts. Those are definitely the ADCs. And those ADCs are definitely being overclocked and run at a spec they shouldn't run at. Like, whenever you see shit like that, you can see how those are, like, physically etched off. Um, yeah. That's fucking wild. Did they do that with a laser? I think they do. I think the, they burn those off with a laser. They burned them off really deep, too. That's fucking wild. There's some relays in there. Probably what you're hearing clicking around. Wow, we've got a really interesting chip here by the BNC that's on at an angle, which is wild. Um, This light's probably screwing up the... the balance um you see the chip by in between those see the three capacitors there's a chip in betwixt the triangle the illuminati eye that's pretty interesting just st sticking in there at a weird 45 um interesting layout design yeah i don't know what's doing usb then I, like i would imagine it's that thing because that's that ISP chip? I don't recognize that logo. And I don't know if this will be visible. This chip right here. It's right by the USB port. And... It's interesting to me. I, I, I don't know what that logo is. But that... Chip is weirdly physically between the like main processor and the USB port. The serial port might be driven directly off the uh, processor, the system on a chip, but that looks suspiciously like USB controller placement. The one at an angle looks like a voltage regulator. Yeah, totally. But yeah. 
That's the chip. ISP something something. You can probably read it better than I can on stream, which is wild. Um, I also have it in, uh, let me put my finger on it and then put my finger in the focus. That should now be focus. But anyways, don't know what that chip is. It could potentially be like the USB controller. Um... Just due to its placement, I could maybe trace the lines off the USB port to see. Mm. Yes. It does look like lines from the USB port go into that chip. And then those go through lines into a via, into the other side, which I think is going into the main chip. ISP 1362. And yeah, I think you're right. That's probably it. All right, so looks like the right age for the device as well. Um, let's see what this can push. Uh, 12 megabits. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Well, that means theoretically the most we can push out of this device is 12 megabit. <laughs> I have seen literal serial controllers that can run faster than that. So there's a chance that Serial might be the fastest. It's unlikely. The Serial probably runs at, like, megabit tops. Um, God, 12 megabit sucks. You have Ethernet now? No, this board doesn't have Ethernet. One of these headers might be for Ethernet. I can't remember if this board had an option. Interestingly, there is a header right here. And... I would not be surprised if that's, like, direct PCI. That is exposed via the front panel. Well, it's not. But theoretically, that those are the pins that would be made contact with behind this uh, plate, right? Um, that reaches through to these pins. And there's four on each side. Hard to say if they're both the same thing, but that could be like a PCIe times four or a PCIe times one. Um, in which case, that might be our fastest way of communicating off this board. Um, what else? We have a bunch of headers on here. Uh, we've got some massive headers. We've got like a parallel port header here. Uh, it's pretty massive. Uh, we've got a couple other headers here. We have other headers here. This is probably like JTAG. Um, let's see if there's any labels on them. Not seeing any. So that's a, we've got like a seven, that's a, we've got a 14 port connector here with one blank. Here we have a, no idea what this is. That connector. And then we have some more connectors down here. And that's where I'd expect that there would maybe be... Uh, honestly... Oh, there's actually five ADCs. There's uh, three ADCs on top and two on the bottom. And they probably uh, pump those... Um, they probably pump those ADCs. Uh, they sample... They probably straddle and command them to each sample separately. I'm guessing that's how they... Why they have an odd number and not an even number for the number of channels because the channels probably directly divide those up. But I'm talking out my ass. I have no idea how these things work. How many pins are on this? There's eight, which I think is enough for PCIe times one. Um, other than that, there's a fan connector. There's a power connector. So this is obviously all input from the power supply. We have the fan connector here. Bunch of uh, four unknown connectors here, header, like pinouts. 
have the connector here that goes to the front board. Um, oh, that is, if I'm not mistaken, I think if you have the nicer thing, this is actually where the pinout for the um, logic analyzer is. So I would be curious if, if that's where the logic analyzer is, then theoretically, this should be able to handle some serious throughput, right? If this is truly the front end for a logic analyzer, this should be able to pump logic anal analyzer levels of data, which is a, a decent amount. Do you have a JTAG -ulator? I don't. I don't have any JTAG devices. I've never JTAGged anything in my life. Um... I don't even know if JTAGulators are the best ones. If I were to get like three or four JTAG things, what should I get? Because I don't want to get one of them because I know some of them don't work. This connector also looks like the exact same number of pins and it's close to these, these things that this might just be the logic controller stuff. If I'm not mistaken, the logic controller provides basically this many pins, right? Oh, all of these. All of these go directly into the CPLD. So these are obviously not debugging things. Um, okay, so that's not it. Uh, there's some spots for pogo pins. Just for different sampling for testing. There's four there. Um, yeah. I think the main thing that we would want to do is we would want to get our OS up and running on here. And we would want to find how to output to the serial port. Because once we can output to the serial port, then we can start like actually having communications. God, I don't know why this download is so slow. What was the RS-232 driver again? I don't think this is an RS-232 driver, um, but it is this. It, it's a line driver. It, it, it's a line driver. I don't think this actually takes digital input. I think this is just like a, a buffer for, yeah, we've got like inverters here. CMOS outputs and inputs. I think this is just like a filter, cleans up the signal. Maybe it helps with like longer ranges and stuff. Maybe it helps with uh, protection of the circuitry and isolation such that you don't end up getting like ground feedback and loop issues. But I could be wrong. That would be my guess. I have no idea what this is. Hmm. Tested some shit in an anechoic chamber. Voltage limiters. Yeah, that, that would kind of make sense to me. Some two channel RS-232 interface drivers. Yeah, I think they're just directly connecting to the pins, probably giving some level of protection and filtering and maybe some like analog coupling. Um, yeah, Windows is almost done. Um, I can try and figure out what this chip is, but I'm going to have to mm, clean that off. God, that bokeh looks good. I love this camera. This camera is fucking unreal. Um, so... Let's see, what's our best way to make this tool? What camera are you using? This is a Sony A7S Mark III, I think. Come on, sticker. Don't do this to me. Don't be a bitch. I could also try using some Goo Gone on here. My main concern with Goo Gone is it leaves Quite a bit of residue, uh, which isn't great. So obviously this is analog devices chip. I, 
I think I should be able to read that. I'm gonna get the rest of the sticker off. Do you know if anyone- does anyone know if Gugon is safe on devices? I mean, ultimately, I can just clean it off, even if it is not good for it. Shit. I'm gonna cut myself up on this board. Come on. Come off. Come off. Come on. Come on. Fucker! God, stickers suck. <laughs> don't act like y'all don't have the same problems. It's d -limonene. Really? That's what it is? I'm gonna get Gugon then, because this will- Gugon will just delete this. <sighs> IPA is useful, yeah. This is just, this just sucks because it's, uh, just stickers in general just suck. Even with IPA, it's just not great. God, I love Gugon. It just deletes everything. Oh my god. This stuff works miracles. It's one of the very few, like, things that I think works really well. Now this sticker will, once it gets saturated, it will just come off real easy, and then we'll clean it up with another pass. Yep. Nice. That's off. And I don't know what is in this shit that makes it so goddamn good, but it actually is nuts. You can use a Teflon knife to remove stickers? That's something I should add to my collection? I've never even heard of a Teflon knife. That would make sense. Teflon is some of the most amazing stuff. What a what a crazy plastic. Fucking beautiful. Unreal. Unreal. I'm gonna clean up the chip that we lifted as well. Where is the spot that I had the solvent on? Kinda all of it now, I guess? There's a solvent? Is D lemonade a solvent? Oh my god, that works so good! Unreal! Unreal. Unreal chat. Wow! Love that shit. 
Smells good too. Do you remember the orientation of the flash chip? Nope. It won't be important. There'll be a pin one designation somewhere. I'm not too worried about it. You can always figure out where the ground pins are and stuff. This chip is copyright 2006. All right, now we'll do some IPA. A little bit of smidge of IPA. Which also is the best smelling shit on the planet. We'll just give everything kind of around here. Throw a cleaning. I'm getting all the lines. Just getting this really nice cleaned up here. Honestly, I could kind of just clean the whole board here while we're at it. Get a good little, uh, good little cleaning of everything on here. Just a smidge. It's just a little dusty in here. That's what happens when you have kind of open port ventilation and a fan. It just kind of gets dirty and gross and we'll clean it up a bit. IPA might smell great, but burning his facade or flux smells better. Honestly, IPA is one of the best smells. I, I love it. I love the smell of IPA so much. Is that a problem? I don't know. Do I care? No. Because it smells so fucking good. Okay, and then the bottom of the board has some, like, crusties on it. We'll just give that a... Squirt, squirt, squirt. <sighs> Clean that off as well. Probably leftover uh, flux from the factory. Good. All right, there we go. Let's uh, put away the goo gone because this shit is like really hard to clean up if it gets on things. And now, oh board. Honestly, IPA works pretty well at removing the uh, goo gone. Came off there pretty nice. So that might be a new combo that I put in my bucket of knowledge because that's really nice okay desk is clean we can put the spudger back boom yeah look how clean that chip is now that is beautiful and there's no way that I'm going to get that to focus, am I? It's like kind of focused. Just don't have the right light to read that. But the chip is clean now. Makes it a lot easier to place in here because it's no longer sticking to my fingers. And that's mounted in there. Yeah, if you want to see the board now that it's cleaned. Um, that looks so much better. But yeah, you can now read these devices. Which is this. So. Is that coming through? So that's probably the main processor 
That's RAM, that's the flash chip we lifted. How does that look, chat? Nice and clean. Is that not fucking clean? I'm pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that one. Okay, so now we should be able to install Windows. We can do the uh, digital side of these things. And uh, that should be terrible. Terrible is what that is. Um, that, there we go. Um, hmm. I missed the printer and microscope. Chromatic aberration and all. Yeah, it really had bad chromatic aberration. And that's all due to the lensing. The microscope doesn't have that. It's the lens that adapts. Um, it's the lens that literally adapts the uh, two together. Uh, let's see if I can uh, change this mode here. Focus area wide. Okay. All right. Um, so what we need to do is install Windows. Now we can go and do that. Let's see if I have anything in here that's sketchy. I don't think so. I don't think so. Everything in there looks fine. Okay, so Windows 10 LTSC 2021. Boom. We go. Let's give it eight cores, four gigs of RAM. Uh, Forty gigs should be fine for disk. And then we'll customize this. We'll say that this is ah, Win 10. Honestly, is fine. Uh, CPUs. Since it's Windows, we have to do this. Change this to cores instead of sockets. Um, and then what we should be able to do is just get these set up to run Vert IO. It's just going to be a better experience. So I'll show you kind of how I install Windows, even though I'm not showing it. So uh, change these, change the cores, don't have it show up as sockets. Windows doesn't like different sockets. Um, change all these to virtual I.O. And that should be pretty good here. So let's start this installation. So I'm going to show you how to install Windows on Linux, but you've never done this before. Do, 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 do. Okay. That's okay. We're going to do N L T S C. All right, uh, we're actually gonna need to shut this down, but that's fine. We need to attach this uh, disk quickly. That should be easy. Add hardware, we're gonna add a CD-ROM device. Uh, then what we'll grab is this. Vert IO, finish, done. So now we have that attached. Um, obviously that's not gonna work because this Likes to change the boot order once you've done that, so we'll just set this up at the top for now. Just uh, call it a day. Windows is okay to boot like this, so not lose my sleep. Sniffing the Rigel's internal I I squared C bus. Oh, interesting.
All right, here we go. Now, now you get to see how to install Windows like a champ. Enterprise N. Load drivers. This. AMD 64. Windows 10. This will give us storage. Then our disk will show up. Then we're going to be in a real good spot. There we go. Now we just install Windows. Mm-mm-mm. I'm gonna refill this actually. Got nothing else to do. Did everyone behave while I was away?
All right. So now here's where we do the fun stuff. We pop up this bad boy. Bet you weren't expecting that. Oh yeah. And then we install this prior to installing Windows. This, this is the way. Now we're gonna get an experience. No one does this. No one does this and they look like clowns. Install that. Uh, you should be able to just click this. Oh, that's not it. Not installed yet. That would make sense. Why did that go to the desktop? Installation successfully. Fuck yeah. Now what I should be able to do is this. Uh, auto resize. Bam! There we go. So now I have VM accelerated stuff during installation. I don't have internet. No, no, I don't have internet. Stop. Stop. <sighs> no, 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 no. There we go. That's Windows. Will we see ads in the start menu? No, of course not. Hey. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. All right. All right, chat. What is going to show up if I hit the Windows key? Fucking nothing, because nothing is installed. Right? Isn't that not fucking sweet? That is why you use Windows LTSC. Right there. Right fucking there. Um. I don't know why I don't have internet. Nice, not bad. 30 second launch time. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what happened. Um, probably... Let's just restart that NAT, see what happens. So that's what it should be hooked up to. Oh, I can also disconnect these CD-ROMs. Well, now I can't. Let's see if I can sh send it a shutdown command pretty soon here. There we go. It took it. But yeah, that should be natted. Oh, there we go. Shutting down. There we go. Good job, Windows. 
Good job. All right. This should be a much cleaner setup now. Yeah, my task manager does the same thing as well. I know what you're talking about. All right, let's get rid of the fucking search bar because it sucks. Let's get rid of the task view button. And then let's make these, uh, let's make this use of, oh, I can't do this because I got to activate windows. Let me uh, activate windows then. Um... Um, hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 Ah! Uh. Hey! All right. That's done. Fuck yeah. Okay. And then we can pin this to the start, or pin this to the taskbar. And we can have this show all icons now. Because all icons is fucking mandatory. This. No. Where's the thing? This. This, thank you. How it should be by default. What's this thing? Action center? I want that. Looks like shit. <clears throat> All right. Um. Good. And then we'll do the whatever this device is. This is a TO8662. And I think we were on the sketchy site. Where was it? How do I buy LTSC? Good fucking luck. <laughs> Isn't this nice? This is what's installed. These things. These things. These. These. And this. Nothing else. The way fucking Windows should be. This is the latest. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes, this is what I want. Uh, and this is from the official site, 1181. Nice. Um, <laughs> Chinese PDF is a trust. It's how I know I'm going to get the right experience. <clears throat> Beautiful. Only the best root kits for your Flash programmer. Fuck yeah, load me up, daddy. Load me up, daddy. <laughs> I'm eating some biryani right now. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. It's fucking delicious. Spicy, too. Woof. Mamma Mia Pizzeria.
Nice. Nice. Let's go. Now it's Windows Defender scanning it. There we go. Nice job, Windows. So proud of you for being able to download a file. Because <clears throat> somehow that's a big fucking deal these days. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this to... Let's see. Is it going to explode? No. It's the classic uh, Exe and RR. Love it. Oh, and then this is an extractor itself. I don't know why it would default to the D drive, because that doesn't make sense. There we go. USB driver in tall. Load me up, daddy. Oh, fuck yeah. I trust the shit out of that. Mmm. All right. <sighs> now I need to, uh... That is the weirdest... Whoa. That is a very weird USB-B cable. Never seen it with a dimple on the wrong side. Um, here we go. All right, let's go grab this. Whoop! My old desk is really hard to work with right now. Love it. Okay. Let's send in... I guess that's what it is. The Zingong Electronic G. Okay. Nice. Let's see what we got. Going to Offensive Con? I'm not. I would like to, but I'm not. Okay. I'm just gonna run it as admin. I'm just gonna assume that that's probably the, uh... Oh, yeah, I need to not have this in here because it wants, it'll want to update its firmware. So I'll pull that out. Okay, so, uh, device. Reflash firmware. Current is four, uh, Sure. It it blinked. I'm surprised that was successful. Let's do a uh, self check. Everything's looking good. Might take us a couple of tries to uh, get this right in the socket. But that's all good. Happens to the best of us. Sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't, you know. Sometimes a TSOP 48 fucking sucks. That's what I'm trying to get at. All right, so that's stacked up on there. That's plugged in. Now, what we should be able to do is tell it what this device is. Do you remember what it was? This. Fuck yeah. Specifically the O4, which is this, right? GL 90 tfi 4 Select. That's the mode we're in. All right, that's in there. Read. Oh, view adapter. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did. I have a slightly different board than that. But it looks it looks about the same. Pin detect error. Oh, it's showing me the pins that it's having problems on. I just need to play around with socketing this a couple times. So Doing a visual inspection to make sure that 
none of these are touching or bent. There's one that's a little bent, so we're gonna just go in there and kind of bend it a little bit out of the way, very gently. Come on. Don't do me like this. Okay, that's good. Eh, it could be a little bit better. Beautiful. And we have one on this side too that has the same problem. God damn it. This is just so scary. It's so easy to fuck these things up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Sits flat, so that's good. All right, let's try it again. All right, that was just... Still not liking it. Did we get new pins now? Looks like it's mainly the right side. God damn. You just gotta... Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I'm gonna like hold the chip down. Son of a bitch. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like the socket's actually bending some of these pins when I put it in there. Today. Today is the day. Bam. Fuck! Let me see, like, this sec technically says NAND 08 TSOP 48. Let me see if uh, I have these specific boards. T SOP 44. Yep. Yep, there's just a, a completely different board. All right. Well, and it's got chips on it, so given it has chips on it, I would imagine, yeah, there's no fucking way that was going to work. <sighs> now I'm doing exactly what they tell me to do. That's on. That socket's in there. Locked. TSOP 48. There we go. Bam! Bam! Yes! Let's fucking go! Whoo!
Unsafe NSA. Yep. Yeah, did everyone like my dank ass Twitter meme? Come on. Let's do this. Bam! Read finished? Perfect. Save this as... Um... Yeah, and then here, I think we'll further specify this is, uh... Rigel... DS one oh five to E that. Perfect. So what I should be able to do is verify this. Which is gonna go through and read it and compare it against what we have in Flash. Sometimes we're pretty smart, chap. Sometimes we use the wrong adapter. No, no, we didn't do that. <clears throat> Maybe you do. Maybe I do. <laughs> Got him. Come on, Python. <clears throat> when was the last time you used Tickle or TK? Never, exactly. God, Windows is so slow. This is all due to Defender. This is all due to fucking Defender. I can guarantee you Defender's fucking pegged. <clears throat> MSMP Eng? Yeah, it's MSMP Eng. What are the fucking odds? God damn it. Fucking ridiculous. This is unacceptable. Unfucking acceptable. Why not disable defender? Good fucking luck. It's impossible. The be the best thing that you can usually do is, um, once PowerShell loads, because PowerShell for some reason takes fucking ten seconds to load, and tab complete takes like thirty seconds. Oh my god, this OS is shit. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, here we go. This. Uh, so good. So good, chat. Beautiful. Done. Oh no, did 
defender's disabled. Oh no! The viruses are gonna get into my computer! Ah! Uh, okay, so, um... Now, we can go into... Where the fuck did it save that thing? Where the fuck did it save that? Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna get rid of the at. At signs are pretty sketchy in a path, to be honest. And then we're also gonna archive this as a zip just to make sure. Oh, here we can see basically how much space we have. Um, we can also see that it's probably not compressed. If a basic zip compression got an 8x reduction, probably a sign that it's not compressed, which is really interesting. Um, that means that we should have space for it. Uh, this. Beautiful. Oh, whoa, what happened? Oh, my bra- I think- I think my browser crashed. Uh-oh. Yep, definitely a browser crash. Fucking crazy. Alright. Oh, getting hacked! They're escaping the VM through Python! <laughs> Alright, and now we can go into Rigel. Uh, make the reversing. Uh, W at this. Uh, how? Mm. Four, 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 Rigel. Zip, Rigel. Uh, four, four. All right. All right. Neat trick with the Python server? Yeah, it's just the best way to get data around. <laughs> um. Increase font. Yeah, there you go. Uh, now let's bin walk this. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. Huh. Does it appear that it might all be uncompressed? Mainly due to these offsets. I don't know, maybe it is compressed. Maybe it is. Yeah, it has to be compressed. I think. Maybe not, maybe there's just not- Oh, no, it's not compressed. <laughs> All right. Um, we need to see what address this is loaded at. We also know it's ARMv6, ARMv6J. What was this chip? Uh, we can shut this down now. <sighs> 
ADSP BF531. All right. Oh, do we have a... We don't have a fucking data sheet for this bitch, do we? No fucking way. No fucking way. No way. Am I... I just assumed I wasn't going to have the manual. Can't believe it. This isn't the programming guide, but this is pretty good. Wow. 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 Can we get some wows in chat? Was he fighting against nothing? Where's my music? Why is it not coming out when I'm not plugged in? What is this? Why is there so much documentation on this? What the fuck? What the fuck? What? What the fuck is this? Am I am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? What the fuck? Holy shit! Holy shit! Unfucking real. Unfucking real. How do you do W get recursive? M. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, no, no, not what I wanted. Not, um. I feel like this is not doing what I want it to do. Jesus.
What's this one? No parent? Is no parent the trick? Can you filter PDF only? Yeah, that's what I'm kind of wondering. I definitely want K. Level one, recursive, convert links. A PDF. Mm. Honestly, I'm going to do I'm not going to do the PDF filter. I think it, I think it's going to do as many fetches anyways. Maybe not. Or are there that many assets on the page? NP? P is page requisites? Oh, no parent. Oh. Sorry, analog. Um... Jesus. Is that inclusive? God damn it. What, do you have a better idea? Chat? It just definitely didn't work. Like, this didn't work. There's way more than th these PDFs. I think this is the first one that, like, worked. Yeah, this is the only one that, like, works. This is working. This is fine. There are also zips. Yeah, I'm going to grab those as well. All right.
Plasma has one that actually works. Oh, robots off. Oh, very Chad. Hey, sysadmins who might be watching this right now, if you don't like what you're seeing, put your shit in a zip file. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is just something I want to have on my archive. Sorry. This is something that I need to make sure lives longer than the existence of this company. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like... Huh... If analog dies, we have a huge issue. Yeah, I know. Um, so what was the one that we actually wanted? Here, and along with this, we'll just save this. Um, right, if we just save this, this is the website that we can open up and see, like, what the correspondence between these, like, EE numbers and this. Because knowing how to navigate these is actually kind of a hard problem. So, now we have that, so that's pretty good. Um, so, who found it? Someone found it, right? Someone brought up what it's called, programming processor programming reference. Beautiful. <sighs> what? I can't fucking believe I have this. I can't believe I have this in front of me right now. Oh. Oh. Would this sort of processor need the DRAM to be timed and programmed, or would that already be built in? On ship level two, how much we got? How much are we talking? Oh my god. Oh. 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 Is this what I have? A BF 533? I have a 531. Oh, includes that. Oh. 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 Oh, my God. Wow! What? What is happening right now? I really wish there was like a fit to... Not page with, but margin with. Like content with. Why are these... <sighs> Why are these so jumpy for the scroll? Is that a config option? Jesus. Min percent mac, uh, ooh. Zoom manager values. Okay. The fuck is this? Really? This? No, because I've got a 125. Is 
is ass. This is ass. Terrible options. Um. Uh, 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 uh. <sighs> oh my god How does this exist? How does this fucking exist? <laughs> Bear back. Changing underwear. <laughs> Motherfucker! How? God damn it. External. Where would Flash be? Let's figure that one out quick. Oh! How fast can we bang this serial port? Wow. Wow, look at those buffers! Look at those buffers! Damn! This is a... a Chad... fucking... serial... system. What the fuck? I, I just... I just... I, I can't even look for things right now. I just want to read. Everything. Every- I want everything. I- I just... Wow. Wow. Can you DMA to this? Oh, that's sport. I don't know what sport is. Serial communications. Here we go. Bought right this. Divisor can be from one to this. Whoa! What system clock frequency? What the fuck? That's not... That's the system clock? That's not my 400 megahertz, is it? 
Oh, divided by 16 times divisor. So clock rate over 16? No. 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 No way. Are you telling me I could run this at 25 megahertz? I don't give a fuck about like the transmission side of things. I can I can make an FPGA receive this data if I have to. How fast can I drive the serial port? Is the system clock seriously the 400 megahertz or is that PLL? Cuz if that's running on a PLL, nah. You can't System clock. There's a core clock and a system peripheral clock. They're derived from the im uh derived from the input clock in signal. Let me page width. What's page fit? Oh, gross, page width. Um the core clock and are derived from the input clock signal. A PLL is multiplying clock in by that. Default is 10x. Can be modified with a software in uh, sequence. On the fly frequency changes can be made by writing to the PLL div register. Oh, that's awesome. All of them are, all on-chip peripherals are clocked by S-clock. The system clock frequency is programmable by means of SL three to zero bits of the PLL div. Okay, let's see what we got. So they are post PLL. Oh. What's uh? No fucking way, chat. What's reset? The reset value of C cell one zero is that, and the reset value of cell that is five. Okay, so we actually know, oh, wait, what? Oh, C cell and S cell, sorry, two different things. Um, PLL div, uh, divider ratio control bit, C cell and S cell are in the PLL div register. Perfect, gimme. Uh, oh, fuck yeah. Oh, it shows the default value! Yes! Who the fuck wrote this? Where the fuck is credits? Jesus Christ. It's beautiful! It's beautiful! I can't believe that. So we have the core select, which is zero. So by default, um, uh, So what do we got here? So we have the divisors. Are there PLL? Okay, here's all the PLL registers in one location. Oh, baby. What What is the one we care about? Sklock? We want Sklick uh, 16 times. Bod. B, don't give a fuck. Sklock. So we want Sklock. 
SL holds the system clock multiplier uh, ratio. Uh, so SL of five, which is default. This is the default, right? For SL. PLL div register. SL is 101. Zero is reserved, and this is, okay, divided by five. Oh, it's literally just the divisor as an integer. Oh, interesting. N to one. Okay, nice. 600 over N. So this is VCO. What is VCO? Is that like an oscillator? I can't imagine an oscillator would be doing 600 megahertz. I'd imagine you'd have like a PLL multiplier somewhere. VCO is the core clock? No, the, this is the core clock. Right? C, C clock is core clock, and that's programmed by also dividing the VCO. VCO is the PLL out. Um, voltage controlled oscillator. Okay. Divide frequency, enable power to PLL, bypass PLL. So we know the default state. Oh, beautiful. The default state is full on. Core idle is not set. PLL locked. Okay, what's PLL locked do? God, this is so hot. Uh, this field is set to one when the internal PLL lock counter is incremented. Okay, interesting. The VCO is also the oscillator inside of PLL. Okay, so somewhere we're going to have probably, I would imagine we would have a, I see a crystal on here labeled 100. 100.00, and it's very close to the processor. I also see a 12. I'm guessing the 12.000 is probably a, um, that's probably the 12 megabits per second for the USB controller. Like, that's probably the USB clock, 12 megahertz, is that a thing? And then there's 100 megahertz directly on here which I'm guessing is going to be the clock in. Which, honestly, 100 megahertz is a pretty high clock rate to be running pre-PLL. Page 14 on the data sheet. Like, the, the true data sheet. Because this says 400 megahertz. I'm curious if it boots at 400 megahertz. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. 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 There we go. There's your crystal setup. Oh, that's the real-time clock. Oh, oh, here it is. F's clock. Oh, baby. Oh, give me, give me, give me, give me. F's clock divided by 16. I don't know if we can do a zero divisor as well. Bit rates from this to this over F's clock over 16. All right, let's see how we get F's clock. Clocked by system clock. So these are sports. I don't know what this is, but these can clock even higher to F's clock over two. I don't know what that is, but that, that probably is pretty, pretty fast. Um, how do I get that clock? It's page 14. 
Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Woo! Oh, yeah. Fine adjustments requires PLL sequencing. So you can change the divisor on the fly, but you cannot change... Oh, fuck yeah. Mmm. Wow. Maximum frequency is that? Yep, because you divide by one and you run FCO. So you have clock in times 64. And I'm guessing clock in is, is literally the oscillator. A 0.5x, so you can divide by two. Interesting. Default multiplier is 10x. An X multiplier can be modified by that. On the fly can be affected simply by writing PLL diff. So default 10X, and then this is default five, right? Do you still play TBC? Eh, no, I don't. I've been playing Season of Mastery. How does a clock multiplier even work? Something with, like, resonance. You, you can build, like, resonance from a signal, right? And you're kind of doing that. I, I don't know how they, like, physically work. But you're like... Yeah, I don't... How the fuck do they actually work? I don't think we have time to go in, into that. The, div the divisor ratio must be chosen by a limit that. So we just have 10x. It can be modified via this, and when it says sequence, that means it's a complex operation to change it. So it starts off at 10x. So, does that mean we're, hmm. Unless that 100 is not the crystal. And that's driving something else. Hmm. I don't see any other crystals. I see a 12 megahertz. There's a 12 megahertz and there's a 100 megahertz. The ADCs are driven by 100 megahertz? Interesting. I wonder what they're running the chip at, then. Unless they're also running the chip off the... I, they couldn't run the... I don't think they could run a 400 megahertz chip off 100, because it would boot up by default, I'm guessing, would boot at 10x, which would mean this would be running at a gigahertz, and there's, you're just not even being, you're not going to be able to run this instruction sequence if it doesn't run by default. So I don't know if that would be it. Huh. Should I trace the pin? They often boot off of internal oscillators without the crystal. Interesting. So then maybe it could be run off of this, where it basically, by default, is a gigahertz, but it runs slower than that temporarily. And then that gives you time to set up a divisor that makes it reasonable to run like that. That would be my guess. That'd be the only thing that would make sense. Because I don't think that would be hardwired.
Uh, there's like a piece of debris in there. Um, how reasonable is it to run two things off the same crystal? Is that trivial? Let's find the, uh, let's find clock in. This is, uh, LQFP. Yeah, I I have the L L P F key. Ah, L Q F P. Um. Well, you can yeah, you can generate any clock from PLL with one reference. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering is if that hundred megahertz is feeding the ADCs as well as the processor. That would be inconvenient if it is. That would make booting on this device very difficult. Um, unless they're running, like, an IC-based oscillator instead of a crystal. So, I want pin number. What would it be? Clock in? I don't see it. Um, clock in. Here we go, right there. Uh, pin 10. Okay, so lead number 10. How do I read these? Pin 1 going down? That's what I'd expect. 1, pin 10. Fuck me. It's gonna be hard. 1. Jesus. Woo! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, no fucking way. Would you look at that? That's insane! You won't be able to see it. Oh my god. Well... If that's not the coolest thing since sliced bread, that, uh, is it going to focus? So here's the chip. There's a, why am I doing that on such a small thing? Um, you see that pogo pin spot right there? That's pin 10. So that pogo pin is actually a reference to the clock. Should make sense. That would be a reasonable thing to have as a as a pogo pin. So I'm gonna do one more read to make sure I didn't miscount, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, one hundred percent. That is the case. Okay. So, what that means is, I can actually probably look just at imp impedance or resistance to basically one of the legs of the crystal. Let's hope these probes are fine for this. Um... Oh, well, I've never pr uh, tried to play around with the programmable interface for this, but I did buy it. I finally bought it. So, um... All right. Chat, you want to see some cool shit? What is the sweet work light? It's just a DeWalt, but I have a ridiculous 9 amp hour battery on it. Uh, so this lasts basically forever. Um, and I have a couple other of these batteries that I just keep on rotation. 
I, and I keep them charged at all times. <laughs> so I've never used this before, and I kind of want to try it out. Let's see if we can get anything really fast. So it's USB. I'm gonna plug in the USB. And then we're gonna plug this into here in the back. Click. And there it goes. So that that is plugged in. Pop out the tilting bail. So now I'm gonna actually clean this multimeter. It's fucking dirty. Um it's just really gross. I've had this for uh, quite a while. This is what I had prior to um, prior to getting my new setup over there, the seven and a half digit. This is a uh, I think a five and a half digit Agilent one two five two B. I bought this when I was a kid. And I actually made a teardown video of it, which was terrible because I was a kid and I was trying to imitate Mr. Dave Jones, the legend. Obviously, it was a little cringe. I did a teardown, put the switch in the wrong direction, which is really embarrassing because when I reassembled it, it didn't work. Of course, I didn't edit the video down very well, so that didn't really get cut out, so it was shit. How does this go in there? Just those two dimples? Okay. Questionable design. Okay, and then that is in there. All right. So my multimeter, I'm gonna plug this, I'm gonna turn it on, then I'm gonna plug this in this is definitely gonna show up as a serial device, 100, 100 fucking percent, this is gonna be a serial device. That's just how these things work. Um. Oh yeah, it's a, wow, FTTY USB zero. Whoa, what are the odds? A PL2-2303. Uh, um, did I install screen? Yeah. I don't know, let's say 9600 to start. That's me switching the off zero one two three four five six seven out nice all right so it's at overload right now let's see if um Yeah, fuck off! There you go. There you go. There you. There you go. So I can see the mode that it's in. Do you think I send it commands? Uh. It doesn't echo anything back. Okay. So. Um, how do I go into that mode? I've never really gone into the settings before. Interesting. So those eye signals. What the fuck is that? Wasn't doing that before. I'm just gonna uh, reset it. 
I think that might that might be a bad A error. The fuck is A error? Auto range error? I've never seen this before. What the fuck? It's not because I sprayed it with a little bit of alcohol, is it? Can't imagine that. Voltage is fine. It's a resistance problem. What the fuck? Put in probes, it's not that. I've been using this device for 10 years. U one two five to B A R. Yeah. Give me troubleshooting. Where is it? How? Give me the fucking real manual, not this piece of shit. Uh, oh, nice. I can, yeah, data logging mode these things. Um, A error. It's gonna be a screenshot, so it won't show up. Oh, I think I saw it. Yep, there it is. Unless the test lead is removed. Did something get in here? <laughs> what? What's going on, bud? What the fuck? Trying to see if it's, uh, trying to, like, see if there's anything jammed in these ports that will clean out just by kind of putting the connector in. I have no idea what's causing that. Anyways, now that we have the manual open, we'll just suffer with it. Um... Okay. 
Uh, and what I want to do is find the serial of programming stuff. Let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. Good. I'm learning how to use this device again. Battery is at like 50%. Nice. Cool. Oh, there's the A error. Weird. Alcohol got it drunk. Yeah, apparently. Um... So, let's go and do this. PLL divisor set at 10x at reset, changed by the program. Means it boots at 100 megahertz? The PLL divider is? No, I think the multiplier is at 10x. Right? The default core clock, the divisor is 0 by default, but the multiplier is 10. All right, let's see if we can get this multimeter putting some good shit out. Um, beautiful. I think that's data. Um, so how do I... Hmm. Well, I can just go read the manual to see what this actually does. Uh... Hmm. Oh, what would it be? Um, dynamic recording? Data logging? Let me see, if I just put it in data logging mode, does it, um... That was a manual sample. So when I sample, I get that. Okay, interesting. I don't know where y'all got gigahertz idea from. A hundred times ten. Right? Am I crazy? If the crystal's 100 and it multiplies it by 10? The crystal is 100, yeah. There's a 12 crystal and a 100 crystal. Yeah. Remote communication. Uh, I don't want the software. Hmm. Most likely uses the 12 as a 10x. Yeah. Hmm. 
Whoa, what's this? What's this? Turn the meter off. From the off position, press and hold this. Oh. Wow, I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, oh, I've got so many settings now. Uh, okay, let's see where I am in the menu. I'm at R hold. R hold. Uh, refresh hold. Enables data hold, manual trigger. Okay. Data logging. Interval for data logging. Oh, it's at 45. I'm going to set that to, to, to 1. How does that sound? Hand. Interesting. Okay. Thermocouple type. Don't care. Reference. Minimum frequency that can be measured. Didn't even know this could measure frequencies, to be honest. APF, auto power off. Oh, you can turn that off. 10 minutes, probably reasonable. Um, percentage scale, 420, blaze it. Beep, I can change the beep frequency? I can change the beep frequency. <laughs> More importantly, I can turn it off. <laughs> uh, backlight timeout. Baud rate, 9600. Nailed it. Fucking called it. I'm going to leave that at 9600. 8 and 1. Echo. Uh, y y Yes. Yes! Echo, yes! Um... Enables auto send of data to PC con- y Yes! Echo on that, uh, reset. Uh, okay, so that... <laughs> let's go! All right, let's see what other settings we can do. Let's see if we can turn up the sample rate. That sample rate was ass. R hold. What was R hold again? Some shit. D log. Clearly, D log is not being used. I'm going to set that to off. R hold, echo on 8-bit, 9600, let's set the baud rate up to maximum, which is 19200, chat, remember that, 19200, no parity, 8-bit, echo on, print, reference, frequency, beep is off, backlight, baud rate, Um, nice. How do you close fucking screen? It's like impossible. There's like a fucking crazy sequence you have to do. I forget what it is. I think it's you open another terminal and you say sudo kill all screen is what you're supposed to do. AC does not do it. A cap X might, might do it. Um, that looks
looks pretty good. Uh, what's the refresh rate on this? Wasn't there a refresh rate thing? Sets the variation that determines a refresh. Well, it's definitely faster than that, so I don't think that's what it's using. Data logging, thermocouple. Well, anyways, I can now do this. You can now see Let's put it into, why can't I, why can't I go into continuity mode? Let's see if Is it because I turned beeping off? Huh. All right, you're currently looking at resistance. So now I can probe things and you can see the resistance. There we go. Beep, beep. All right, um, so I can probe that pad from the clock line. See if I can find anything close. Got to probe two sides of the board, which kind of sucks. Come on. Hmm. Well, there could be a cap between them. Um, I don't know where that goes, actually, which is really unfortunate. Doesn't look like the trace is visible. Hmm. Uh... Start probing everything then. I'm just running my hand all over the board. Trying to find anything. Chat, let me know if you see anything at any point. Because I'm expecting it'll go into a capacitor. And then to the crystal. Oh! That. Not there. There. 485... 485 ohms. And then to the other side. So that has to be a cap. And that via... Interesting. I 
think this is a cap. I'm going to switch to capacitance. Well, can't probe it on the board. Unfortunate. But I do know that those are connected. I now have it in ohms mode. Yeah, so I can see some massive ohmage there. Some massive ohmage there. And ohmage there. Oh, and there. I'm not just measuring to ground, am I? Yes, I'm just measuring to ground. Sick. Sick. Okay, so that is that. Weird. Obviously that's straight connected. Hmm. Uh, wouldn't expect that much resistance. Come on, give me some, give me some good shit, chat. This is tragic. One. Hmm. Damn it. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. Hmm. It's unfortunate that that's basically connected to ground. Oh. Unfortunately, the refresh rate is just so slow on this that I can't hop around too much. I also really don't like that I'm just seeing ground. That's so annoying. Yeah, the 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 big 100 megahertz does seem closer to the CPLDs. I just don't know how I would confirm that this is uh um connected to that oscillator. I was hoping that there would be a resistance that was like kind of measurable. Four point seven mega ohm to that crystal, and that could just be complete coincidence, effectively, and that's what kind of sucks. Four point seven mega ohm to the other crystal too, so that's clearly nothing. That's absolutely no signal. Um. You know, I'm going to turn off auto range. Uh, and how do I do that? Uh, auto. 
How do I turn off auto ranging on this damn thing? Min max average. Okay, sick. Hmm. Hmm. How the fuck? This damn thing. That's referring to logging. Well, I don't understand. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh... So this is now in... This is in 51 kilo ohms. That's 510 ohms. Five ten kilo ohms, five mega ohms. I think five ten kilo ohms, like half a meg. So this should be able to read like it should be fine, but this should really help with sampling where I just like smash shit. Seventy six k ohms to ground from that pin. Which means that there's a linkage between ground. If I'm getting different settings on... Okay. Interesting. Do, 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 do. You're getting the experience now, chat. I'm just looking for where that pin is connected. Like, somewhere it's going to be going to some resistor or something. Obviously, it's not going to RAM. Could be up here on these resistors. Make sure I'm still on the pad. It would suck if I lost my foot on the pad. Eh, nothing, 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 not seeing it. I'm literally dragging my probe across every pin, basically. I know it sucks, and I know we don't really need to know this information, but I want it. So... That's across that. That might be a cap. Six hundred K ohms. Let's go into fifty one K mode. Nine point six K ohm. But that's just ground. 9.6k ohms to ground. Uh... So if we see 9.6k ohm, we probably just found ground. But that just seems so fucked. The problem is there's clearly a capacitor in the loop. Take a picture, it doesn't matter. All of the traces aren't visible. It's basically useless. There's nothing to visibly look at. It's weird that 19k ohm is ground.
Uh, kind of sucks. No, it's not fun to watch. Just probing everything. Hoping that something shows up. Just double checking. I can probe nothing. Where the fuck would that go? Crystal seems to be connected to a plain Texas Instruments Hexenberger. Yeah, I wonder if they're like... We know that they're doing some shit outside of the specs of chips. That is one thing that we do know. Is there any way to mitigate the fact that it's 9.6k on the ground? Whoa! Whoa! I found something! Yes! All right. That is data, putting it back into auto range mode, just so I can see. Uh, 33 ohms. And then on the other side of that resistor? 0.33 ohms. Okay, that is definitely where that comes out. That's going into the lattice semiconductor. What? What the fuck? Turning off auto ranging again. I liked 500k. Like, they're using the lattice part for clock distribution? Yeah, I guess so. Because this is clearly, if I put this in auto range again, and I probe here, that's this is clearly where it's coming out. 0.35 ohms? 100% that is just directly... So this is, um, TP507, okay, that's a probe point. Shit. Yeah, so basically... All right, so I have no idea then what the clock rate is, right? There's just, there's no way for me to know what the clock rate is of this device then. Because it goes into magic. So we'll just stop caring about that. But we do know that that lattice chip should be able to function and behave the second it boots up and gets power so that shouldn't be something that we have to worry about when we program the chip. Well, it's up not too much, just doing some hackings. All right, so, okay, that was cool. Uh, so, yes, we can change the clock rate. We can change that with the PLLs, the divisors at runtime. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Anyways, really all we care about is where Flash is gonna be set so that we can load up this image, take a little look-see. All right. So let's take a look at 
Uh, chip bus hierarchy. Um, load store from L1. Exten uh, external memory devices. Okay. There's the processor. Debug and JTAG. Reset vector. Power and clock controller. Yep. L1. That goes to the PAB. Oh, that's, yeah. Uh, DMA core bus. DCB. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Alright, so you got clock rate information here, latency information. Let's see if they just d straight mention flash. Yes. Um, that flash memory. The high performance memory. Uh, so I have a 531. So I have 16K of data SRAM. Um, physical, 132 bytes of physical memory. External memory. EBIU, 16 bit interface, uh, glueless connection to a bank of SD RAM and then as many banks of asynchronous devices such as Flash. Program to control up to four banks of devices. They're each a one megabyte segment, regardless of the size. Okay. Um. Huh. Hmm. I think this had a good memory diagram. Unless so you reverse the lattice bitstream, yeah, that would be fucking impossible. <laughs> Possible, but very difficult. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow, you can just directly access the, like, caches. SDRAM memory. Async memory bank. Would this be Flash? I would imagine these async memory banks would be flash then. Unless the flash would be copied into RAM, but I doubt it. So this would lead me to believe. So RAM is just at zero, which would make sense. How much RAM do we have in here? We've got a Hynix H57V126 DTR. Will this tell me anything about it? No, probably not. Um, 57... 75C1262. Nothing about that is really screaming at me about the size. Uh, hey, here it is. 1260 GTR. It's literally this. Uh, synchronous DRAM. And then this is a 75C. So it's this. Four banks times two megabit times 16. Four times two times 16. So eight times 16, which is 128. 128 megabit. Is that correct? Address buffers. I'm pretty sure I got that right. 128 megabit. Yeah, yeah, it literally says in the top. <laughs> it literally says in the top. 
Yeah, 128 megabit. Um, so that is uh, 16 megabytes, which is honestly a lot of RAM. So they're clearly using the 16 megabytes right here. So that's directly where that will be mapped in. Fucking gorgeous. And then I'm guessing the async memory banks are probably just going to be mapped into the flash. Which we know that the flash is... How big is that? 8 megs. Hmm. Would they just have the first 4 megs wired in? Uh... So we can see kind of where things are burned in here. And I'm curious if they only have a certain amount of this programmed in. What would four megs be? That would be four megs, right? Yeah, that's four megs. Nah, there's stuff here. Unless they do bank swapping, or they access it ver via like speed or something. Thoughts? Well, let's see if we can find an address. We're expecting two things, start, addresses started with two. Um, is this big Indian? I don't know, let's just open it in a tool and just see what it does. RMV7, obviously. Let's just load it at zero. Um. Let's run linear sweep. Find me some code. And then find me some data. We'll very quickly figure figure out if this is the right Indianness, and I'm gonna say no. I think we have Indianness incorrect, but maybe it's just stuck on a big function. Let's see. Ah! LDRPC this. Ooh. Um, come on, Vinja. There we go. It got stuck on a function. Something in here must be very scary to Vinja. Ah, uh, this looks like garbage. This looks like garbage. 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 I'm not feeling that. Let's try it again. Let's try Big Indian. That feels better. This looks like real code. Ah, maybe not. Maybe not. 
No, that's garbage. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's figure out what this processor is. Little Indian bite order. All right, there we go. It's Little Indian. Uh, and this is ARM. Are these not ARM? I thought these were ARM. Is it not ARM? I thought it was just ARM. No, they're not. Blackfin. I didn't know that's its own thing. Um. Boot modes. Oh, here we go. Execution starts from here with 16-bit packing. Oh, I didn't know that. I... What a interesting language. RIP! Rip? Rip chat? No fucking way. Uh... God damn it. Well, this might just not be feasible. P code. Someone also did Blackfin seven days ago for Binja? Let's see if it's in plugins. No, that's not what I wanted. Uh, what's the fucking thing?
No. Okay. Let's go and grab it then. Uh, let's see if we can get this dude's random shit to build. I bet we can. Looks like it's just gonna work. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck! Let's just build it single threaded. Maybe older version of Ninja, yeah. What did it build? Uh, no match for operator that. How do I set, uh, CC for CMake? Can you not just set CC? Oh, nice. Okay. It just was cached, I think. Let's try Clang. It's Clang. Um... Uh, what do you do? You just copy it into here, right? That's what you do? Come on, you fucker. Come on! Come on! Uh... Not sure if you need the API folder. I know this font sucks. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, uh trying to see the directory structure here. No, yes. Uh, where's the fucking log? Open plugin folder, binja plugins. Uh,
Oh, it does show up. Okay, nice. All right, we got it. We got this. We got this. It just works. I thought it wasn't gonna work. Um, where the fuck was that? Uh, Rigel? Reversing. I'm gonna get rid of the zip. That way my tab complete works. Okay. Blackfin, based at one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Platform, standalone. Whew. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this will linear sweep. No fucking way. Call P0. Well, that might work, chat. This might work. <clears throat> Lots of warnings. Let's see what we got. Valid instruction length. Hmm. Call P0. What would P0 be? With 16 bit packing. Yep. Jump to that address. All configuration settings are set for the slowest device possible. Three cycle hold time. 15 cycle read. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Boot from Flash. Memory bank zero. Hmm. I mean, can we even build Rust for this? No. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know if we can even build Rust for this. Hmm. Really? No. I have it? It's one of these? I don't- I don't think we can. BPF? That's probably Berkeley Packet Filter. Yeah, like, 100% this is Berkeley Packet Filter. BPF programs. Yeah, eBPF. Yep. Hmm. Can we just not ha can we just not program from this? Okay, LVM has been able to support Blackfin forever. Okay. 
What's up, Blackfin Triple? There's no good way of doing this, is there? That's the most useless thing I've ever seen in my life. Why, why can't I dump this? Oh, thank fuck. Did they drop support? Oh, do I not have it built? What? Did they... Did they not support it anymore? Oh, it was dropped. Rip. Rip. Um... Uh... Damn it. Hmm. 
How hard is it to make an LVM backend? I want an example. Chonker of a commit? How big is this? It's not that big, is it? Yeah, 5k lines? It's really not too crazy. I think this is the full code. I mean, they're literally, like, registering it as a triple. Like... They have tests. Yeah, let's see if we can get this build. Sick. Just check check it out and see make. Uh, is that all we do? Why are you telling me how to build it, not how to check it out? User guides. I want to check out the source code. I want to check... Why is the very first thing building an ARM? No, it should be building... God, the documentation for client... LVM is just a piece of shit. Sorry, LVM people. It just sucks. Um... Uh, latest version? Sure. Let's just do that. I know that this is massive. I don't already have it checked out. Okay. Um... Enable projects, that. Alright, looks easy to me. Looks fucking easy to me! I've never done Clang backend. I've done Clang passes. Clang kinda sucks, to be honest. We're gonna do this, chat. We're gonna fucking do this. God, what is wrong with us, chat? Fuck! This is not a fun Monday!
We're gonna do exactly what it tells us to do, which is this. Which is this. Uh, what architectures are enabled by default? I need to make sure binge is not gonna oom my system. Oh, it looks fine. Looks like we got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> How do I pick the CPUs I generate? Oh, yeah, we're just gonna... <laughs> we're just gonna stop right there. <laughs> All right. Uh uh Okay. Builds both LVM and Clang for debug mode. For subsequent, you can just do make Clang. That's for Clang. Okay, let's see building LVM then. I need that. I need this. Uh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay, and then let's do exactly what they tell us to do. LVM. There's where it was removed in 2011. Thank you. That's very, 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 very helpful. I didn't know you could do CMake build. Let's see what this does. Let's see if it uses cores. No. Uh, dash J192. Woo! Let's go! Come on, do the good shit. There we go. There we go. That's the good shit. Oh, yeah. This is not a very parallel build process. It's pretty sad, to be honest. I wouldn't expect that we're 40% of the way through already. I thought LVM was like a 10 minute build. PDB util, interesting. Maybe Clang isn't as bad as I thought it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Build some... Oh, now it... Now. 
Okay. Come on. <laughs> Thanks you like thank you licked for the 20 months, hell yeah. Oh, what is this building program? Sign me up. Yep. Yep. Oh, here we go. Code gen. Let's go. Let's use some cores. Fuck yeah. Fuck up my cores, baby. Oh, no. Okay. Now it's not. <sighs> um God damn it. My poor CPU is just so bored. Uh, Clang building. DLVM enable projects? Is that something I need to do? Probably. Let's see what kind of D's nuts I got. <laughs> D enable. <laughs> uh, can include Clang, LDB, compiler RT, LLD, poly, cross project. Build type, debug release, enable assertions. No for all their build types. All right. I didn't know it was this easy to build it. Should run on these. Yep. Cool. What other options do I have? Check out the code. Building LVM. Uh, build it. Uh, what kind of options do I have? Build type, enable projects. Compile jobs. Use linker. Um uh, enable all of them, use that threads experimental targets. Debug info, defaults to off. Oh, that's externalize. Um, how do I do a minimal build? For targets to build. This, defaults to all. Ooh. Yeah, this isn't terrible. This is not nearly as bad to build as it usually is. Yeah, what's the most minimal build I can do? Like, I, like, obviously threading, like, doesn't matter, but theoretically, like, I don't even care about threading, right? 
Here's what I'm thinking. Do you think we can make like a brain fuck back end? Basically, can can we make a Turing complete back end to LVM and LVM will figure out all the hard shit for us? In which case we can implement a minuscule subset of this architecture and get code gen. I don't even know what it's doing right now. Uh, let's find like LVM minimal build. Let's see if anyone has talked about this before. Ah. We're just gonna kill us. Don't give a fuck. Fuck it. Get out of here. Nice knowing you. See you later. There's a script build clang minimal? You're fucking kidding me, are you? Maybe implement a risk 5 interpreter. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. But I'd like to go riskier than risk 5, to be honest. Risk 5 is still so sisk. God, this poor hard drive. That would explain that. That would explain why everything feels like shit. Well, that's gonna take a hot minute to recover from. Fuck me. Wasm is garbage. Any stack-based interpreted language is shit. Okay. Oh my god, come on. We're doing some cleanup right now. It's just so hard to do anything right now with the file system so full. Linux just really does not like when you fill up a drive. But we should have some space now. But it's just gonna, it's gonna be really hard for it to come back to life, I think. Cut a tag, all those inodes is free, I know. It's a terrible disk on this mas machine as well. It's just a single single drive. I didn't even think it's NVMe. I think it's just a platter. Or not a platter. Uh, I think it's just like a Samsung SSD. Oh, apparently that stuff was still running. Cool. Um, Suda and CD of this. Let's see how much shit we're going to be able to delete. Oh, we have a Chrome build in here, too. Yep. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll fucking do it. 
Uh, I don't know what's in some of these folders, to be honest. Uh, we can... To be honest, I don't want to free up any more space. I think I freed up enough space, to be honest. We got 117 gigs. I, I think we're okay. Uh, so here's what we can do. We can do make dir build, and then we'll do mount t tempfs tempfs build. Okay. Uh... That's all we did, right? So we definitely want to do a release build. Uh, what was this minimal thing? Was it third party? Uh... Let's see. Okay, what do we got? Build type, min size rel, build tools. Uh, so this isn't a release build. This builds Clang. Targets to build x86 only. Don't build runtime. Uh, let's just see what we got. Oh, that didn't copy very well, did it? And then we'll, while this builds, we'll look at, like, what this is actually doing. Now we're building it in a tempfs as well. So... We have literally more space in RAM than we have in temp, uh, on the disk. Yeah, you can just see, you can just see we're using 70 gigs now. Fuck yeah. So far, it's just kind of working in parallel, which is great. It's what I want to see. It's just, it's using all the cores, building in parallel. I think this is going to be a reasonable development environment. Okay, hitting some non-parallel things, probably doing some linking. Nice. Okay, time to do some linking. 
Hey, there we go. LVM Symbolizer. But this isn't building a debug build, is it? Or a, a release build. I think it's a debug build, but whatever, it's probably fine. Yeah, I probably don't need this JIT shit. Envy Link stuff either, probably. Does anyone even use LVM chat? I don't know. It's probably awful. LVM performance is just really bad. <sighs> yeah, it's definitely getting hung up on a couple things here and there. Build kind of takes a lot longer than I think it should have to, but whatever. Now we're going to start doing some linking, and the linking is going to take forever. Is there a good generally used JIT? No. What's an orc JIT? What's an LVM orc JIT? I have a feeling that we don't need orc JIT. Not a minimal build. Minimal build my fucking ass. Building fuzzers and shit, too. Commands are, yeah, commands are broken. Bots are just not working. Gimme. Gimme. Fucking gimme that shit. <laughs> the hat is amazing. I'm glad you like it. It's weird that I have like a style. I've never worn a hat like this before. Never in my life have I ever worn a hat like this. But you might be able to tell that I uh I sunburn pretty easily. What was the target list command? What was it called? Clang, clang, print, print targets? Really? Hey! Fuck yeah! Uh, okay. Um, min size rel. Oh, this is a minimum size release. I see. So this should be a release build. Uh, nice. We do have debug info, which is good. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 
All right, so what do we want to do? Do we want to look at Blackfin getting removed? Uh, get branch uh, Blackfin uh, port. What? How the fuck do you create a branch? <laughs> I'm so fucking bad. <laughs> uh, oh, do you just check out? Check out B, yeah. Fuck off! How do I get fuck off? <laughs> I don't work on fucking projects. Uh... <sighs> All right, chat, you ready to have your minds fucking blown? Um... Hmm. Blackfin. Well, <sighs> list of all targets to be built by default. Eh, we don't have to do that. Here's what we can do. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Uh, and then we'll say Blackfin. And then we'll enable projects. Uh, and the project we want to enable is Clang. I think this is fine, right? I want a release build for Blackfin of Clang. Beautiful. Whoa, what? How do I say none here? Do I just leave that empty? What happens if I do this? Can I just do equals? Can I just do equals to kill that list? If I only want to build an experimental. Thoughts? So, what? They just... The, the code still kind of exists? Not in the set of libraries. All right, let's see what happens. Um... Hmm. 
all targets. So do I just make it, put something in the target directory? Obviously we don't need the tests. Um, well, let's just go into where was targets? What's this? What's this? Can you target C with LVM? Like I would I would think it'd be cool if you could just target directly to C. What's C sky? Can you actually? Hey, Roblox Tutor, thanks. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. We're having a good time. Um... Hmm. The original C backend was removed in 3.1. Okay. Okay, so this is a main maintain backend. Compile generated C code and run. No fucking way. Do you think this is easier? Do you think that's easier than making a backend? I don't know how to do CMake lists, to be honest. I'm just gonna... Gonna go into build two. Okay, um. Okay, let's see what we can do here. You know what? Let's just see. This might be really gross. But let's see if we can do this.
You, you, you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? Uh, is that 63? How the fuck would I link this into their dumbass build system? Is it this? Ooh, that did something. Okay, that, that theoretically worked. Let's go and find. Let's grab this. Uh, browse file. But yeah, I could try the LVM CBE. Okay. Um, well, that's already, uh, changed, which is not good. Table gen. Nice! Three. Uh, blackfin.td. Is it because this file doesn't exist? Uh, how do I check out a specific branch? Oh, dash B, I'm fucking dumb. Or not branch, I don't want branch, I want, uh... I actually want to commit hash. Uh, 
no, not get checkout. I want to fucking clone it. Can you not do that? We'll just get that going then. What are your thoughts, chat? How hard is this gonna be? What are the odds that this is even remotely close to working? Zero, yeah. I'm in the same boat. Everything that has CMake in it is guaranteed to not build nor work. Oh, yeah. Honestly, that wasn't as much data as I expected. Two gigs? That's all? Kind of surprise. is not that bad. It is pretty bad. Because just like make files, it doesn't really define uh, an environment to work in. So it's basically just a full-blown scripting language, which means there's no standardization of build systems. Like it's just it's just make but worse. Not worse, but different. Get check out that. Sick. I'm hoping this is one rev before Blackfin. Nah, that's pretty old. Uh, this is Blackfin being removed. So Blackfin should be gone during this one. Okay. Let's uh go all the way up, and then we'll go back to this minus one rev. There we go. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thoughts? I would imagine we don't need any of the tests. Where the fuck did that go?
Come on! No. Same problem. How does that differ from this? Add component group. Gen register info. That's the same. Oh, L LVM. Twenty five. Add LVM target, great. Add thoughts. 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 Only Blackfin is using this. Do we just not need this? Doesn't look very important, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, I just can't imagine that matters or is important. Yep, just, once again, useless shit. Uh Okay. Mhm. Mm Could not find target. Um Now whose fault is that? How do you how do you search in the future? I know you can do tilde to search in the back, like this. Can you go in the future? To be honest, I have most of the shit that I care about already. Um, I got a future and diff past, yeah. I don't know why I went to main. Do you think this matters? LVM all targets? Probably not. Autoconf. I don't think that exists anymore. There's a lot of testing. Basically, I need to figure out how to hook hook this in to LVM. Have you ever used GNU poke? I have not. What what would cause this? Targeting this. Oh! Add a subdirectory that. What? D 
do they not do this anymore? Let's just do this. Let's just make it a main target, maybe? I don't know. Um... Targeting Blackfin. Perfect. Okay, so... That's obviously still the same issue. Get property... In lib cmix list... LLVM lib cmake list. Is this not what I have open? No, it's not. Definitely different. Um, line 63. Build generate C fragment? What the fuck is this? Here? Lib LLVM. Oh, up one more. It's all the way up here. I'm s yeah, that's stupid. Uh, here. Uh, Why am I getting crazy? LLVM. Did I just miss it? CMake modules. Oh, I think I just kept looking at the top line and that threw me off. What? Yeah, weird. Okay. Uh, LLVM build dot CMake. How do I how do I debug this? Is there any way to actually debug CMake? Uh Oh my god, it's generating fucking C. Yeah. Wow, this sucks. LVM build lib name this component name Is that how it's failing 42 this Get property could not find target blackfin Uh Hmm Get property. How does this work? Are these just all appended together or some shit? How does how does that work? Looks like shit, whatever it is. Um Like, what, what is it actually failing? Is it this? Target doesn't exist? Oh, no, this is the target. I see. So this is... This is the arg name. Then this is the arg. LVM build component. Jesus Christ, what a piece of shit. Uh, 
And it's trying to get LVM component name. So what's failing? Could not find target blackfin. Okay, so I need to create a target. This is great. This is really nice. Mm. Really nice. Uh... Whoa, it's that. Is it that? Did I do J48? Oh, so thank you. I was wondering why I was building so slow. Hundred and four gigs of RAM. Yeah, now it must have just removed a bunch of files. Ugh. What if it just builds, chat? There's no way. There's no fucking way it builds. We're gonna have to do some fixing of stuff. It's gonna suck. Rip! Come on. We'll just have to do a couple like J8s. Maybe. I don't know why it's doing this dumb bit reader. What's dash K? Keep going. I was gonna say I thought I remember doing that at some point. I like this. Oh, I really like this. I need to... Why do I never remember you can do dash K? That's super useful. You can just get all the shit out of the way. How hard is this going to be to port? It's what, 10 years old? That might be bad. <laughs> it might be bad. Shit. Mm. 
Now officially LVM devs. I really need to learn how to output, have Clang generate my own architecture instead of using RISC-V for everything. It would just be better. Come on. Why not directly use LVM on IR? Because it's unbelievably cisk. It's terrible. LVM IR is absolute garbage. It's terrible. Also, a lot of things like don't happen until the linking stage, and I don't know how well you can link IR together. I'd imagine you should be able to do it, but... Just go back to Itanium. I actually like Itanium. I think Itanium was ahead of its time. I think Itanium would work now, but it it was it was too early. We didn't have the software to make Itanium work. But I think now Itanium would be honestly one of the better architecture designs. It's kind of really tragic. I think it was just too far ahead of its time. It's a shame. Oh, we got the orc jit. <laughs> okay. So now I should be able to just run make, and this should go exactly to the problem. Yay! Yay! All right. Uh, value not specified for template arguments of parent class. Okay, so this describes the register file. I see. Um... Value not specified for template arguments. Subreg index size. Okay, that'll probably be pretty easy. Honestly, I think we can do this chat. Uh, are we gonna actually do this chat? Uh, is that number of bits? Oh, two twenty six. Okay, I need another monitor open. Yeah, subreg classes doesn't exist anymore. Fuck. DP, DP. Are these, uh, floats? Oh, fuck yeah, we're close. Shit. 
Just CC, not CC. What's that comment? I don't know. I can't imagine these things matter. Yeah, y defining thing. Oh, wait. Do they use these down here? Yeah, they do. Fuck. Ah, oh, shit. BFI32 red class. Uh. Ooh. Ooh, nothing's even written like this anymore. R P uh, D sixteen L. Let's see if the historical version uses this and other things, and then we'll see how they use it. Uh because I also don't know this architecture, and that's going to make this very difficult. We're going to look uh, at x86, because I know how L x86 works. Um, lib targets x86. Beautiful. And this is x86 register info dot td. Yeah. Wow, this actually looks so much more coherent, to be honest. Uh, subreg classes. Value 226. Value not found? Is it high six? Is it these? Oh, it's these. Def these namespace BF BF being Blackfin. Um What do you mean they removed the defs? Like, just literally get rid of them? Wow, Blackfin Instar info. Now computed. Sick. What are we at? 919? Oh, that's CPP. Oh, shit. How many lines? Oh, 137. Okay. Um... What we got here? Biffin call seek. Okay, let's see one of these bad boys. Uh, not used. Oh. Well, oh. The fuck is this? In ones. What requires two args?
I need to see like more. Is this a stack? This requires two args. Uh, 674. Which is 919. 919 calls it. In what? In the DAG. VTNT. It's a pseudo instruction. Oh, this is defining the assembler. Oh, cool. Um, to be honest, we probably just don't need these pseudo instructions, but I don't know if this is actually going to do anything for us. Oh, it's outputting those. Okay, it is, it is generating these. Fuck. Um, start node requires exactly two operands. Are these not two operands? Call sequence start, call seek start. SDT. Has chain out glue, has chain opt in glue out glue. That looks the same. So that does not change. So then it is due to seek. I think this. Let's see where they define this. Ooh. So what is... This needs another thing. I don't know, this looks good. I'm happy with this. Is that not it? SysVT SD call seek start. Maybe I don't need that. Maybe that wasn't it. That's easy. Thirty seven, comma. Comma. We're fucking nailing this.
shit. I think ones is just a separate issue. Ones. F2. No fucking idea. Not infer all types in pattern. What's the pattern? Ones is only used here. Um... Outs, ins. I mean, it doesn't seem to be an issue with F2. Let's just shut this up for a second. Uh-oh. This is a problem. Oh my god, that's far. All right. Target Instar Info. Yeah, it was used in Microblaze. So we can actually go see when this happens. Is uh, is that gone? Microblaze? Fuck. Oops. Yeah, I don't know what this is, man. Gen target intrinsic. Generate target intrinsic information. It's gone.
was moved to... Oh! It's not the intrinsic thing, then. Thank you, big one. You're fucking nailing it. Uh... Wait. LLVM. No, I want... What the fuck am I looking at? Eight th this. Wait, what? My I'm in the wrong file, I think. So fucking confused. Get log even if the file doesn't exist. Oh sick. Didn't know that. Uh Line 17. No such file or directory. Yes. But we know that this exists at, uh, target? Not target. That's what it was. Uh, code gen. Target... Insterinfo.h Code gen. Yeah, that I see no reason why that wouldn't work. Blackfin register info. Oh, there's just multiple of these files. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I thought it didn't fix it. I didn't notice that the name changed of the file. Uh, LVM constants. IR constants? Looks good to me. I think we could ship that, maybe. Yeah, I just didn't even realize it was two different files. So much of the name looked the same. Derived types. Thank fuck. Module. IR as well. Okay. Just a couple path changes. Target mangler. IR mangler. Unless it's flying lower mangler. That is going to be our first problem. Okay, so we just have to delete that. MC target registry LLVM uh, 
MC target registry. We're hitting C plus plus code. Shit, I don't know how C plus plus works. Target data was moved to data layout. Which was, that was this. Was it this? This is the one that we were fixing up, I think, right? What? Oh, this uh, tree doesn't have shit like that. Wait, what? What was the file that I nuked? Is the target data? That was the only thing I removed, right? So target data has now been moved to data layout. Uh, oops, data layout. It looks like LVM IR data layout. Um, what's going on here? Automatically generated enum. Expected identifier? What? Oh, that's. We know what this is. That is... This. Um... Okay. Um, so how do they do that now? Uh, lib target risk five. Uh, in this, I don't know, uh, we have name spacey, is it that, is that the syntax? That's my guess, fuck.
Is the unit 16? Huh? Is it because standard int isn't included? I, I thought maybe this needed to be named or something and they changed that. Um, that was my guess. MIPS register info looks the same. That in this. Uh, death fiends. Otherwise the colon syntax, yeah. So how the fuck do I give it a name? Like how does the MIPS one work? Low high, low high. And I think these might be wrong, but that's okay. Um, I sixteen. I'm just so confused. Um... Ugh. For namespace, like arm does the same thing. Namespace arm in. Uh... Dude, I don't get it. Enum colon unit 16. What the fuck? I mean, we can look at this, right? Register pressure sets. See where that fucking comes from. Hmm. No idea. I mean, unless it's you and 16T. Like, I, I don't know C well enough. Like, I thought these, or C++ well enough. I thought this could be an anonymous enum. So I would imagine that it might be a really shitty error that's due to uint 16. Like legitimately, I think it might be the uint 16. What file is this? Ink pulled in where? Here.
Do I have to say C standard in or whatever? Same issue. What? Uh So that's in build. Okay, let me see what a uh, lib target x86 Uh, x86 register, hmm, x86 gen register info, bam, uh, no, I mean, they do it here, like, in x86, they do it, and this built, Like, this is literally what we built. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's... Namespace BF, enum, colon, that, that, no sub, one, two, three, four, sub regs, close, and namespace, like, I don't see why that wouldn't work. I mean... Okay, let's see where that's included then. That would be included in, uh, okay, uh, vim dot dot slash lvm lib target x86, x86 instr info dot h. Not seeing anything that would suggest a different header uh mc target desk what is this instra info register info What the fuck? MIPS includes... Okay. That would be included in, like... I'm trying to think of the highest level thing. Blackfin Instra Info? Here? No. No. And that is gen register info in Blackfin Insta Info 19, which is here.
Is there an error earlier in the BF? Mm. I mean, it's hard to say like what errors I'm getting. Conflicting return types. Like we could we could go through we can go through and fix some of the other issues bang those out and come back to this. It doesn't make sense. I agree. Let's go to the next one. Get Kali saved regs. Conflicting here at 36. So this is non-generated stuff. It's at 36. And this is probably going to be implementing some shit. Yeah, virtual methods. It appears to be not having unit 16T defined. Yeah. God, that is a terrible, a terrible message. Okay, so what would... But, like, it's included from here. Right? Let, let's see if this is gonna run the auto generation. Let's see if I can fix this up myself. Type def uh, unsigned short unit 16tt. Let's just start with that. Is it. Uh, did it regenerate? No? Oh, that fixed it. Oh, well, that makes no sense. Um, get call e saved. We know that that's the issue. We'll figure it out next time it comes around. I'm not gonna go and undo it and fuck around with it. We're just gonna keep going. Um, Nice fucking error message. Uh... Looks like get call e saved regs is now a const mc fizz reg. Did I nail it? Yeah. Um, can be marked override. Does that matter? Get frame register. Yeah, they just typed these things. Good job. Good job. They did very basic code quality things of using a fucking type def. I'm guessing we're going to have the same issues on all these other register ones. Okay, apparently not. Cannot declare this to be an abstract of that. Jesus Christ, am I gonna have to learn how fucking... Uh... Is it because of some pure shit? Oh, Jesus Christ, these are... This is very complex, C++. Way beyond anything I know about C++. Conflicting return type for get pass name. 
Cannot declare field of an abstract type. This is in a different file. Um... Because the following virtual functions are pure. Is it because this is fucked? Will that go away when this is, is fine? Um... We're gonna fix this. Get pass name. The fuck did they call- oh, this is now a string ref. Sick. String ref. Bam. Const, and then override is the keyword that this wanted to have. Come on, let's make some fucking progress, chat. Let's uh, add overrides on these. We're gonna have no warnings, no errors. We're gonna do this shit right. Uh... Note this. Because of the use of it as an iterator, I think. All right. Um. Note this const. What's the problem here? Is this a change of the interface? Look at the definition of this. I agree that that does feel like the thing that needs help. Looks like it might have changed. Let's take a look, see. That's code gen. Uh. I, I don't. That of abstract type, this. Because the following virtual functions are appear, let's just make it so it can actually print the whole fucking screen. So we can see what it's doing. No matching function to call for this. Uh, we can start banging those out, I guess. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Because I think it might be an interface that's wrong, and I, I don't know if we need to get everything right before that starts giving the right things. No matching function to call for this. Okay, so as a printer, there's no TM streamer. Candidate that no no conversion. Okay, uh, as a printer, nice. All right, we can uh, we can see this. 
Uh, lib target mips uh, risk five. Uh, risk five as in printer. Um, MC string. Okay. TM move streamer. Eliminate frame index. Oh yeah, that got rid of that. All right, let's go take a look. See, uh, eliminate frame index then. Uh. Where's this implemented? Okay, it's just gonna be a change of this for sure. This will be easy. Really won't be too hard. We just have to find an example. Looks like ARC64 does it. Uh, iterator ii spadge and unsigned fi operand num. Okay, and then we can also do the same thing for the header. Fucking dumb language needs headers. That's the one I did. Sick. Badge. Uh, ooh. Hey, override suggestion. I know how to do that. Gotcha. Emit raw text. Ooh, fuck, that doesn't exist anymore. Oh? Ooh. Yeah, nothing does that anymore. Oh, fuck me. Oh, is it literally that? Out streamer. Yeah, you're right. I forgot we changed that type. Uh, looks like we use a lower. Beautiful. Uh, inst Blackfin inst printer has not been declared. Hmm. Uh.
Ah, uh, fuck. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Uh... I think we're going to be fine, chat. Hopperin. Asm generator. Yeah. I think I need to make a new class, though. Looks like new things put this in target desk. And then they make a uh, arc inst printer dot CPP. And then they implement inst printer and they get that from mips inst printer dot h print asm operand Print special. Ah, oh, we don't even have that. But things still have ASM printers. That's what's interesting to me is Inst printer print operands. That's also implemented for an ASM printer. Eleven. That Blackfin Inst printer has not been. Why is there both an Inst printer and an Asm printer? Do I need to make an inst printer? It looks like it just is going to be the same fucking code as this. 
There's literally duplicate code. Fucking gross. Yeah, there's just duplicate code. Oh my god, fuck. Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? This auto generates it. So I just need to define it? Get mnemonic. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, MC target desk. MC target desk, MC asm info. Okay, well, I can do that then. If you're gonna be like that. Uh, blackfin instar printer dot cpp. Uh, instar printer dot h. Obviously, this isn't going to work. Um, Okay, and then we'll do I guess And this is Asm Writer. Uh, Asm Printer. Target info. Nice. That's the right spot. Uh, 
How do I start with C++ dev? No idea. I don't know C++. It's supposed to be inst, not insta, right? Classes have to end with a semi? No declaration of get mnemonic defined here. Yep. Uh... H. Oh, hey Rebel Elder, how you doing today? Thank you so much for the support. Wait, this is auto-generated. Are all of these auto-generated by table gen? Anything that's override is something that might have been generated, I think. Let's see what we got here. Print instruction. Print operand was not declared. Print operands. Fuck. Nice. Nice. Uh. <sighs> ah. Hmm. I think we can do this. Print operand. Uh. 
Uh, shit. Fuck you, Geek Pirate. <laughs> hey, Illegal Freedom, how's it going? Uh, a cool O'Day hacker. <laughs> Since when are you streaming? Oh, I've been streaming for a long time. Uh, print operand. Jesus. Like... I think I got this, chat. We fucking got this, chat. We're gonna... We're gonna nail this. We're gonna nail this. Uh... Fucking two te two space indents. Go fuck yourself. Disgusting. Disgusting. Get out of here. Fucking gross. Ray? The fuck do you mean? Thirty one and Insta Printer H? Oh, yeah, you're right. Holy shit, that is very few warnings and errors. Oh, we're almost done with one vial. Woo! Woo! Uh, issue we want print special. Oh, you want to add some print special, okay. Uh, uh no idea what the fuck print special is. Looks like, uh, memory operand is mem operand now? Is 
Is there only a CPP? Okay, sick. Print mem operand. Uh, print. Uh, is that that what you want? No, you want memory operand. I see no other. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Not declared in the scope. <sighs> Prince? How is there... How? What even is that? Oh, Jesus. Print special. Print mem operand. Okay. What? That, that, and my operand info. In member function this. These are inside of what? The first instance, we are in print instruction. This is the inst printer. Oh. Oh. Sick. Uh, sick. Uh. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Okay, so. Um. Interesting. Okay, so. You have to just add print memory uprends. No problem. Will do. Uh, then we have to implement this here. No problem. No fucking problem. Think. Uh, inst. This is not a machine in structure. Yeah, this is an MC inst. Uh. You want print mem operand? I'll give you print mem operand because it is more correct. I thought you wanted memory for some reason. Do you want both? Okay. Uh, Asm Writer Inc. 512. Uh, this. Print special. Uh, just stack. Okay, print special. All right, let's see. Um, that is emit. Okay. Uh, as a printer, that can be generated. Looks like this should be on the ASM printer. Okay, we can do that. can't imagine that matters. We can probably just do nothing, right? Gotta declare it, because it's shit language. Uh, and I think this is an override as well. I still don't know how C++ works, to be honest. Yes. <sighs> okay, print special is not declared in this scope. Oh, that's an inst printer. Fuck me. Was it an inst printer this whole time? I feel like they hacked this shit in after the fact. Because I feel like these things are not very fucking clear. It's pretty goddamn bad. We'll run this through Clang format at the end. I don't give a shit. Um... Oh. And this is an MC inst. Whoops, didn't mean to close that. Whatever. Fuck. Uh. 
There we go. Print special, print special, MC inst. Is that what you want? Get rid of override. Does it generate the ASM printer from the inst printer? I think it does. I think that's what what is happening. Mang. That's the mangler, isn't it? Uh. Uh, let's try and look for this. Thank God. MO global address. Print a global address. Mang. The fuck is Mang? You want to see if it's a uh, mangler? No, it. What? Okay, it's just been renamed. No, no, we didn't. Mangler. No, there is a mang. Mang was not declared in the scope. That's LTO. Mangler. No. That, uh, hmm. No, I don't know if there's one. <sighs> that must have been a global before. Um. That's fucking wild. Uh... 
M O. What's what's M O? Running C tags might take a minute. The, the thing is, like, we're not even through one of the C++ files, and we're probably gonna have to do this ten more times. Fuck, dude. Um... Get MBB machine basic block? No. Uh, print symbol operand. MO is global. MO get global. That gets a global value. Get symbol. Try print symbol operand, yeah. Are we on a new file? I think we're on a new file. Uh, sub target info. Nice. Nice. Can't find junior level jobs in low level. It's kind of an oxymoron, to be honest. Wow. What's going on here? Insta info. That's deep. Uh, 163 is physical register, target register info. Okay. Uh, and let's go into here. And we are trying to do is physical register on there. Um, uh, 
I have an idea. Okay, that's only here. Um, huh. Uh Hmm. Target. Yeah, maybe it's register colon colon. Yeah, I think it is. Oh. No matching function for that unsigned int. And I'd imagine that these take regs. Unsigned. What? LLVM register. I want LLVM code gen register. What is physical register? Did I not do that at the start? Jesus. I thought that's what I did. I guess I just forgot to update that. I updated the front. Whoops. Drive types. Oh my god, that's a new file. Holy shit. I don't know what intrinsic info is, but uh, it doesn't look super important. And it might not exist anymore, but... Uh... IR? I think a lot of these are actually IR. I'm just going to guess. I think module we know. Function. I think module is probably one as well. Probably intrinsics as well. Yep, there we go. Let's just bang them out. This one as well? Yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, of course that's not going to exist. To be honest, there's no... No one does intrinsic info anymore, so we're just gonna kill it. Um, sick. Uh Um
Okay, so I need to add this to this. What do you mean? Oh, it's target desks. Whoops. Thank you so much for the gifted subs, Frode. Fuck yeah. All right. I hope it doesn't make heavy use of this. Oh, fuck me. No, it doesn't. Fuck yeah. I think this is just a feature that's gone. I think that just moved. Thank God. Uh, target becomes code gen. Fuck yeah, let's keep going. I can do these all day long. Shit. Looks like this is gone. Oh, do I want selection dag? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, we do need that. <sighs> Ripperoonies. Selection DAG info. Okay, we do need those. Uh, 
Uh, what was the... What was the revision? Um... Nice. Okay, uh, we're back to where we were. All right. All right, chat. What did they rename it to? Selection tag target info? Sick! I see it. And that's also gonna be the interface too, isn't it? Yep. Fucker. Target data is code gen, and so is frame learning. Twenty-three. Oh, it's IL. Is it that? Uh, target data is data layout? You sure? That's dumb. Okay, so we have an IR intrinsics. Yay! We've made it to C++. Uh, oh, God. Uh. 
That's not terrible. High 16. Yeah, obviously that's going to be a problem. We'll just go and uh, fix this, you know? We built two, we built two files. We built two fucking files. You see that shit? You fucking jealous? Ho 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 baby. Uh, uh, am I in a header file right now? Yes, I am. And what do you want here? Stack grows down. That comma zero comma alignment. Woo! Oh, this is probably a line. At least this is what they do for, uh, this is what they do for the other architecture. Could be wrong. Could be very wrong. Hard to say. Target data. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, what? Doesn't even exist. Probably got a default implementation. Frame lowering 33. Yeah, do I need that shit? Probably not, maybe. I don't think I need this. Mm. Uh, this makes sense. Uh, what was get pass name again? Bring F. Thanks. I think it's const as well. You see some vulnerability? Nah. I don't really follow vulnerabilities. This? Uh, 
Did we make any progress? No. Got a lot of warnings. We're just gonna ignore them temporarily. 53. Conflicting return type. Virtual void select? Really? That doesn't make sense. I'm gonna find an example. Nothing ever. Uh, get pass name. Yep, and that's the cons override. Then we have a select. Void. Uh, no matching function get target constants. Is that, is that important? Turd dag get target constant, that should exist. Uh, is it the variance? Int value type? Hmm. I think it's typing. Uh... No matching function. Where? Get target constants. Do I implement that? Maybe, no? Get target constants. Uh, to count trailing zeros. For call of that, what's count trailing zeros? Uh, get target constant. Uh, wants four ed two. Why though? Uh, 
I don't think I implement that. No. And if I don't implement that, then... Uh, I do implement that here. These. Um... MVTI 32. Mm. Uh. Nice. Nope. Fuck. Uh... Okay. Okay. I don't know what this does, but I'm doing it. I don't know what it does, but I did it. Okay. All right, dag to dag. It's a daggy dag problem. Who pulls in blackfin.h? Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Now we just have a couple more things to do and it uh, should be all good. Uh, return null. Okay, I think this just does that. Uh, and that just is that, I guess. What did we do for this? SD lock N. I don't know if that's in scope anymore. Uh. Uh, you're telling me there's seriously a global N mapped in. That is disgusting. Oh, it's the node. Never mind. It's just node. And I'm guessing this is fin then? That's just gonna be Finn. There's nothing else that it could be. Okay. 
To be honest, I don't know if this is supposed to be CN or not. I can't say I give a shit right now. Um... Uh, updates node op rams. Uh, that's a massive change. No idea what the fuck that is. Update node op runs. Ops. Uh, okay. Okay, update node operand then. Where's this used? One spot. Okay. Fuck. Update node operands? Op begin op end. Ops data. Begin and end? Ops. Ops. Um. Small vector. Uh, get promoted. Of one up two. Begin and end. Numb. And begin and end. Up begin. Fuck. This can't just take an ops now, can it? Nailed it. Uh, uh, red class. No matching function. Okay, sick. What's going on here? One, two, three args. Uh, 
descriptor index tri and then this also needs the motherfucker I don't know what mf is but uh hopefully that's in scope let's see Yeah, MF some fucking massive global. Okay, uh Okay. <sighs> what do you mean? You want me to just deref that? I fucking will. Damn right. Get rig class, TRI, MF, 171. Uh, what did we have to do to these? SD lock fin. In this case, I think it is... Hmm. SD lock... Mm. SD lock... I'm gonna say NI. Oh, uh, do you want copy? What's the node? NI is a node iterator. Uh, no matching function. And I. Obviously, that hasn't been created yet. And we're copying from a. Uh... Hmm. Might be UI. Might be right. You might be right. Oh no. Motherfucker. Let's take a look-see at what some of these things do. Uh... Okay. Uh...
What's this? Is this a new file? No. No matching function for this? What the fuck did we do for these? Did we... Have we solved these yet? No. Debug location, mask VT, in mask, RC. Oh, shit, wrong thing. Copy to reg class, mask vt, in mask, dag constant? Yeah, fuck if I know what this is. Probably a trillion of these. Oh yeah, oh this is just generic out the butthole, nice. Oh fuck. So we have an opcode, we have a get debug lock. Which is a debug lock. After... Proper register classes. Um, hmm. Oh, God. Is he keen? Get use, stop get. SD use? SD use dot get gives an SD value. Fuck. Get target constant. That should be an SD value as well. Target opcode, copy to red class. Debug lock. Simple value type. SD value, SD value. We don't want some DREFs here, do we? I could see one and some DREFs. Nope. Definitely not for that. Hmm. 
Well, I have no idea what the fuck their intent is here. We're at the end of the file, which is... ass. Debug location, simple value type. Debug lock to SD lock. Is that your beef? Debug lock. 